speed will be rewarded on this potentially chaotic day of competition in the cross country. Great to have you with us at Zhangjiakou as the Paralympic Winter Games of Beijing 2022 continue. Sitting, standing and vision impaired classes for women and men will give us six gold medalists today, but only after qualifying semis and finals in all categories. The competition will be hot, maybe with weather to match as the remarkably mild conditions continue across eastern China. So Ukraine, China, the United States and Germany, Canada, they've all impressed so far. Will they, through this uh, very busy day of competition, as you can see, we've got a lot to get through. And uh, fortunately, the weather is smiling on us, but uh, the snow is uh, quite soft and it's uh, disappearing gradually. We'll get through the end of the games, though, no doubt about that. We're going to rattle through these qualifying stages quite quickly. The 1.5 kilometre distance of 2018 has shrunk to just under one kilometre, so there'll be no holding back for anyone, uh, starting with the 38 competitors in the men's sitting event. Yep, uh, an action-packed day is spread out before us here at the Zhang Jaku National Biathlon Centre. It's a return to the cross-country part of the Paranordic events here at the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games after some stunning biathlon action. 24 hours ago and the temperature continues to rise up in the mountains it's a, a positively balmy six degrees here at Zhang Jaku as we get ready here for the qualification race in the men's sprint sitting category so 15 nations here on the start line 38 competitors and a few racing for the first time here at these Beijing Paralympic Winter Games. Yes, there are some specialists in the field, which does make it interesting. And uh, this field of 38 gets reduced to 12 to go through. There'll be two uh, semis of six each. And the more highly seeded athletes are, are at the top of the field. But uh, it's great to see a spread of nations. And we, towards the bottom, we've got Georgia, Croatia, Azerbaijan, and uh, all with interesting stories to tell. But uh, they won't have long to tell them. It's going to be over very quickly. Uh, so they'll go out in 30 second intervals in the early stages of the competition today. Yeah, the calm currently before the storm of racing. We're going to see Romale of Italy going off first. He was on the podium at the recent uh, Paranordic. World champs in Lillehammer in Norway and Taras Rad, very accomplished uh, para biathlete, competing again in the cross country here. And watch out for the Brazilian as well, Christian Westermeyer Ribeira, a uh, history making the South American the para Nordic ski up. He goes off third here. There'll be the, all the usual suspects, really. The Ukrainians have had a, a terrific game across the the cross-country and para-biathlon events here, China and uh, Canada as well with four cross-country medals. Colin Cameron, he goes off fifth there. Vasil Kravchuk and Daniel Knossen wants a, a lift in his fortunes. That's the uh, Korean there, Shin. He had a, a fabulous games four years ago at home in Pyeongchang and bib number six there, Vasil Kravchuk looking to bring more medals the way of Ukraine. So a high quality field here. They're trying to qualify for the latter stages of this uh, sprint event. Interesting the way the event unfolded four years ago. Andrew Sol was the last qualifier to make it through in the sitting category. And, uh, the American then went on to win it. So he, he snuck into the second stage by 0.07 of a second and then uh, didn't look back. He uh, was very close to not making it and goes on to claim a gold medal. So who knows what's before us today? I'm sure some interesting uh, twists and turns will happen. And the main thing is to stay upright and uh, give yourself a chance. Seconds away. First to go then, Giuseppe Romale of Italy. Had a fantastic world champs. He was a silver medalist in the middle distance event, 12 and a half 
kilometres race there in uh, Lillehammer eight weeks ago. Fifth in the long distance event here, his only time out on the racetrack thus far in Zhang Jacquard. Here from Ukraine is Taras Rad. Already enjoyed uh, some medal success in biathlon and uh, in Pyeongchang in the sprint. Had a fifth, so he's got credentials over this shorter distance. Back out there with Romale, though, as he negotiates this uh, rise and tries to pick the quickest part of the track. Well, Christian Ribera, history maker, not only is he breaking new ground, breaking new snow, if you will, as the first Paranordic athlete for Brazil four years ago in Pyeongchang. He was the youngest full stop to compete at those Korea Republic Winter Paralympic Games four years ago at just 15 years, 118 days, and, by the way, a silver medalist in Lillehammer in this sprint event. So Romelet negotiating in that tight downhill right-hander. They go back to the start, and Pablo Bal, and uh, the Ukrainian is 35 now from Lviv. And uh, in the sprint at the uh, World Championships, had a sixth. Over the short distance, there really will be 100% effort right the way round. Six medals for Canada so far in the Paranautic events here at these Beijing Paralympic Winter Games. Four of them in the cross country. One of them to Colin Cameron, who goes off next. But uh, we're racing with Romelay, and this is how quick fire it is on this morning of competition at Zhang Jacou as the remaining athletes leave the start gate. We have our first finisher in Giuseppe Romelay of Italy. Well, let's see what the time to beat is. Okay. Effective time for Romelay of 93%, his LW11 sport class, and uh, just over 220, so 224, 46, and we'll be hoping that that is good enough to put him in the top 12. Yeah, so just to give you an idea then, his actual time, 235.33, but uh, with that 93% factored time, that gives uh, Romelay 224.46. Next to come in, Rad, 224.84, so he's uh, 0.38 outside, but we're seeing our first reference times. Next to leave the uh, start gate, Daniel Knossen, it's his uh, third winter Paralympic Games, just outside the uh, medals in the, the biathlon sprint. He was fourth there, 12th in the biathlon middle distance, sixth in the long distance cross country. So, the, uh, the man who is happy with his nickname of Crazy Pig comes across the line, Westermeyer, and uh, he's quite pleased with that. Goes into top spot for the moment. And this is just qualifying stages, remember. With two semis of six competitors each out of the sitting class. <laughs> Gives the moustache a bit of a twist. He's a, he's a good character. So 2.23.48, the reference time here. Uh, Pablo Bao is going to be quick. Point 12 outside. But these are the quicker, the higher ranked athletes we're seeing finishing here. Top 12 to go through. We're looking at our qualifiers, yet to be confirmed, of course, with 38 in this qualifying race as Cameron comes over. 797 inside the uh, That's best time so far, <laughs> certainly is. There's a little bit of a warning bell being rung by Cameron. Well, we, he's a powerfully built man. He's built for sprinting, if you like, as we go with uh, Maxim Yarovgi and the Ukrainian... He's a very experienced man at uh, 32 out of Mikhailov. In the Paralympic Games, he has a gold medalist in Pyeongchang over the longer distance and third in the sprint in Sochi. What a cracking time that is from Cameron to carve eight seconds off uh, Westermeyer Rabira's time. 
15-1-7 outside Cameron's mark. There for uh, Kravchuk. Bib uh, 7. Knossen. 11 7, 5 outside. Gives him a, a provisional sixth place. So next to leave the start gate, the Kazakhstani. Yibel Khamitov, 7th in the long distance. And then, uh, a nice a shot there of uh, Kamitov just uh, getting into his groove. Next over the line, Shin. 13 seconds out. 228-6-0. Just reflecting on that early performance from Cameron as we uh, let's go back to Mao Jean Wu as he heads out onto the course. Cameron was second fastest qualifier four years ago, went on to make the final and uh, sort of alluded to just missed a medal. But if he can maintain what he's just shown us, uh, boy, this is going to be an interesting day for him and for others trying to match him. Pike over the line. 11 and a half seconds outside Cameron's mark. Should be good enough. Next to go, Guillaume Rocha, the Brazilians, by the way, four-handed in this race. So there's great representation from Brazil, who want to carve out a bit of a niche in terms of the, uh, the Paris snow sports scene in South America. Rocha, 25 years of age, he was 19th in the long-distance event, the athlete. Sao Paulo. These men work very hard right throughout the year and in the off season, particularly on their upper body strength, the shoulders that do all the work. And Rovi in 234.71, uh, that may not hold up for a top 12. We'll see. Zapratinsky, another of the Canadians coming through, hoping to join Cameron. It's not too bad, 10.46 seconds off the pace. Remember that there's nearly eight and a half seconds between first and second best time so far. Yeah, gives you an idea of just how quick Cameron's lap was. Absolutely blistering from Colin Cameron, who set the fastest time thus far for Canada. Bib 18, next to go, Liu Zizhu. And we know that they've had a fabulous game so far in the, the Nordic events here. The Chinese, Liu, won the uh, sitting biathlon sprint. So, a rifle not required here. Now, what can he do with the pure power in the cross country. The Chinese comes over the line, Mao. Yeah, 4.52. Well, that is a very good time from Mao. Just uh, halving the difference between Cameron and Westermeyer as Mao comes in in second place. And here's Yang Peng about to go also for China. They've got a, a strong contingent in this one with six in the lineup. And he is a 29 year old from Putian long-distance sitting gold medalist. Five golds all in in the uh, Nordic events, the Parabiathlon and the cross country combined here. It's been a, a breakout event for the Chinese Paranordic squad. So, the last shot next to come over, 18.68. Oh. The pain of it. Remember, it's top 12 to go through only. Wang Tao next for China. 25 from Binju. Finishes of 6th and 7th so far in two biathlon races. He was 6th in the 
the biathlon sprint. LW12 classification. We'll endeavour to uh, talk you through the various classifications in due course in this quick fire session of racing. Calendar Boys comes in for Britain, 21 seconds away from Colin Cameron. So I'm afraid he won't be uh, lasting through into the semi-finals. Next comes fellow Brit Steve Thomas. Out of Barry. And uh, he's made visits to the World uh, Championships. And, uh, both Prince George from Canada and Lily Hammer. Canada of Poland through 22 seconds down. He's outside the top 12, so there'll be no spot for him in the second stage. You is through in third place, and so he's certain to make it. Yeah, Canada two and three at present behind Colin Cameron's mark. Next out of the blocks, Wesley, another of the Brazilian contingent, 11.5. The classification, uh, 23rd in the uh, long distance event. Zhu next. And Zhu Yanfang from Pingxiang, the 25 year old. He's dabbled in the wheelchair basketball as Zheng comes in. Goodness, 2 14 17. Not expecting that to uh, displace Colin Cameron by over a second at the top of the standings. Next to go, do. Can he do it? Just outside the medals in the long distance event, fourth there, do Tian as Lula comes in, 22 away from Zheng's time. Won't be going through. That's a shame for him. So, the China, one, three, and four in terms of the quickest times thus far. Wang is at 9.38 away from Zheng Peng's mark. Another quick time though. One, three, four, and six they are at the moment. As uh, Ethan Hess heads out onto the course. Young Canadian, and the locks flowing. And, uh, the morning breeze, 10.15 we are, local time. Just looks over his shoulder at this little tricky left-hand turn and up. They do make the, the turns quite technical here. There's usually a change in, uh, in terrain as well as uh, direction as Thomas comes through outside a qualifying time. Mori Iroaki, bib 28 next to go, looking to post this, uh, this time that will be sufficient to get it in amongst the top 12 that will book a spot in the semi-finals a little later in this session. 2.27 is the bubble time at the moment, and sitting in 12th position is Daniel Knossen. Dos Santos there, Wesley Dos Santos, uh, well outside the, the requisite mark. Here comes Zhu into 10th. Yeah, and that pushes Knossen out of a semi-final place. It's been disappointing so far for Daniel Knossen here in Zhang Jaku. Sergei Usultov, uh, the veteran from Kazakhstan at 47 from Petra Pavel. And on the course, see what he can do. Uh, There's some top 20s in uh, Pyeongchang. So we go back to the start and one. First cross country event for Wan Yu Min. Two previous biathlon races here. His best was 17th in the, the middle distance. Do well, not quite there with his uh, teammates. That they could have five go through though. China out of the six. Josh Sweeney. 
great Paralympic winter history behind Josh Sweeney. He won gold with the USA para ice hockey team in Sochi. Now it's Ethan Hess sitting the line, but in the 240s, that's way down, I'm afraid. 30 seconds away from our leading time. So last qualifier at present, Aaron Pike, 227 dead. Nicholas Lima of Argentina, sole representative from that South American country, from Ushaya. And, uh, 17th in the long distance event. The sprint at the Worlds. 25th. Little Hammer. For the Kazakhstan athletes in the uh, race here, it's, uh, it seems that Berezin is another DNS, so Billy Ornick will. Uh, I leave the start gate, the 29-year-old, uh, 21st in the uh, the long distance. We're seeing more finishers now. Maury coming through outside a qualifying time, unfortunately for him. Well, this is Bib 34. This is uh, Berezin, the Kazakhstan athlete, 38 years young. They had a bit of glory 24 hours ago with their first medalist with the well, it's Gerlitz. And Berezin just hits the racing line and uh, tries to post a, a top 12 time. 2.27 still, the final mark of Aaron Pike. And the salt serve is way outside. Uh, another a Kazakhstani in this race. Field reduced to. Uh... 36. We had two not uh, able to take the start line today. Steve Arnold of Great Britain and uh, Azerbaijan's Memon Ramazanzadeh. That's a, a great shame. Love to have seen the Azerbaijani go around. He was a former visitor to Beijing in 2008 in the summer Paralympics in powerlifting. No spot for one in the semi finals. All for Sweeney. To 34, only good enough for 19th place at present for Josh Sweeney. So Croatia with uh, Josip Zima in the race. He was there in uh, Pyeongchang four years ago. 35th in the uh, sprint and competed also at the World Champs in Lillehammer quite recently. 27th place in the, the 10k so uh, he needs a, a big improvement in his speed if he's to get a, a top 12 qualifying spot here so Lima is outside I'm afraid 33 seconds down 27th it's Aaron Pike sitting on that 12th spot as you mentioned 227 dead so that looks like it'll seen through. We've got one, two, three, four, seven definitely qualified out of the 12. We're just waiting for times to be confirmed, but it doesn't look like any of these late starters can make an impression on that top 12. Big Leone will outside it, but the pride of competition, of course, he's well pleased to be here and competing on such a, a beautiful day. Well, that's uh, Josip Zima. Difficult for him to, to get any traction, really hurting in the elbows there. So, Bear is in 30th place, not going to be going through to the semi finals. So, 224 98, that's the uh, mark of Xu Yong Feng currently in the, the 10th place. But, uh, it's in real time, really, it's at 2.27, and that mark of Pike currently holding on to 12th. It'll be still nervy moments for Aaron Pike as he waits for the final races to come over the line and post their uh, qualifying lap times. 
Not far away from the women's event, uh, 20 minutes after 10 here, and the women are due to start at 10.24. Just stay with our last competitor out on the course for the men's sitting category, Zima. Croatia, John coming through outside qualifying time also. Yep. John J. Sop down the order. Timori Dadiani. Our first to fail to finish inside three minutes there. 30497. It's the flag bearer for Georgia at the opening ceremony of these Paralympic Winter Games. So Zima coming through, and this will complete the action for the men. And uh, we'll be able to confirm for you shortly the top 12. And uh, Pike is going to hold on in that spot at uh, 2 minutes 27. As you can see, Zima's uh, well outside that, so it's Zheng, Cameron, Mao, Yu, Westermeyer, Ribera, Wang of China, Baal of Ukraine, Romelet of Italy, Rad of Ukraine, Zhu, Zaplatinsky of Canada, and Pike of the United States. They are the unofficial qualifiers. And Zima takes it down to the line. A little over three minutes. Yep, our last finisher then in this men's sprint sitting uh, qualification lap 106 behind Zheng Peng. And uh, we have our qualifiers. China have taken five of their six races through into the uh, semi finals. They've had uh, three of the uh, four fastest. Colin Cameron there for Canada, already a bronze medalist in these games with uh, a fast time. And our last qualifier there, Aaron Pike. Daniel Knossen misses out. So too, Shin e Hyun, a previous medalist at Paralympic Winter Games. But uh, there will be a chance for the racers who didn't qualify here in this uh, sprint category to go again, maybe, in the, uh, the relay races later in these games. So we're just about ready for the women's sprint sitting category also and a field of 18 and it looks this way with the two star americans first out of the gate masters and gretch vicar of germany bronze medalist here in these games and they've come from usa great britain poland china ukraine Norway, Brazil, Germany. The Masters will lead them out. And I hope to uh, lead them throughout the day. Skarstein there of Norway. Sitting tall in the chair. Yep. Good to go then. Top 12 go through to the semi finals in the women's sprint event here for sitting athletes at Beijing 2022. So, Oksana Masters into the race. Three events so far here at Zhang Jaku. Three medals, including a gold in the biathlon sprint. So, she's not required to to get into the shooting range here. Does she have the speed again, this formidable athlete from the United States? And next to go isn't bad either. From Colorado Springs comes Kendall Gretsch. And cross country, just out of the medals in the long distance event, finishing fourth. It's made up for it in uh, biathlon, but this is the sprint in the cross country. And she sets out after Oksana Masters. Uh, category and uh, time correction. So we'll see how these two shape up after the almost kilometre journey. Well, Anya Vicker next to go. It was a stunning 
final a couple of laps in the uh, biathlon middle distance event to get her on the podium her first podium spot in these games vicar she got a, a bronze medal now then she was the uh, the sprint world champion in biathlon and uh, we'll look to be one of the 12 quickest here and certainly that's what we expect as brazil go next so Arlene dos santos rocker at uh, 31 from Pinhau, but uh, a lot of the athletes train out of Sao Carlos for Brazil. As we go back to Masters, rattling around the course in good style and pace. <laughs> On one ski for that tight turn. Uh, that's uh, some athleticism right there as uh, Birgit Skarstein gets ready to go. The Norwegian superstar, Birgit Skarstein. During the summer months, she's a para rower. During the winter sports season, she gets on the skis. This is her fourth Paralympic Winter Games. Racing cross country, she was there in Sochi. She was there in Pyeongchang, eighth in the sprint four years ago in Korea Republic. So as Masters prepares to come down to the line, we'll go back to the start to pick up uh, Christina Picton of Canada. And uh, she's... 28 now, um, based in Canmore, Alberta, like a lot of the uh, Canadian para athletes. Masters, top 12 to go through, same as the men's competition, and 242.54. Nice morning workout there for Masters. Sets our first reference time. Well, she will be going through, we know that. It's just uh, whether anyone can go quicker. Next out of the gate, Indira Lisse of Norway, 35. She was eighth in the long distance event. She was there at the, the World Champs at home, 13th in uh, this event, the uh, sprint. What can she do here, Indira? So, Gritch. Just outside the time of Masters at uh, 2.47.71. Would fully expect that to hold up and see her safely through to the last 12 as we go back to the first of four in a row to leave the gate for China. And Ma Jing at 34 from Jinju. Had a pretty good race in the long distance, finishing fifth. suits her. Yep, 13 medals for the host nation China so far in the Nordic sports here at Beijing 2022. Li Pan Pan as one of them. Bronze in the long distance cross country event. So has she got the burst? Has she got the speed needed in the sprint? So 252.27 Here's the time of Anya Vicka, nine seconds away, nine three quarters seconds away from Masters Mark. Should be enough. Wang next. Wang Shiyu, 22 year old from Shenyang. Former archer at a national level. Picked up this particular sport five years ago. Dalian. Rocher coming down to 59.49, just a tick under the three minutes. Let's see if that's good enough. Scars down to finish. 2.42.54, the best time so far, 14 seconds slower. Scars down, provisional fourth at present. So that'll be enough, surely. So Wang has uh, left the start gate, Shu, Bei Bei. Lira Dudderline prepares to go as well. Now Picton for Canada. And uh, not inside three minutes, 20.93 down on Masters there. That puts a sixth. Billadeau now of Canada. Based out of uh, Quebec.
And on the way, steps the Sitsky out of the tracks. This is the preference of uh, some of the athletes. Pilado had a ninth in the long distance event. We go back to the finish area and Lizette of Norway. Second youngest in the race here, Anastasia Lalettina, who's 19. Biathlete and cross-country skier combined. Now, let's have a look at Marl, seven, eight, eight away. That'll be good enough. So Lalettina having left the start gate. Next up, Yang. Yang. Jing, the 32-year-old, and the gold medalist from the long-distance event. We're back to the finish, and Lee, well, that is good. That is uh, knocking on the door of top spot just outside the time set by Masters. Wow. Crossing in 257.03. Could be good enough to hold on to top 12. Now China all set to continue their form, aren't they, here at home today. Next to go, Hope Gordon from Great Britain. Team GB with their biggest Paralympic Winter Games squad since Lillehammer in 1994. Well, she's uh, turned her back on swimming, still loves it, but uh, also takes on canoeing, as Hope Gordon. As Chu comes in in 10th spot. Back to the start for Aaron Martin. out of uh, Seattle, Washington. Prior to an accident, uh, rock climbing, that was her preferred sport. And now, really enjoying the sit skiing and masters. Time of 2.42.54, unchallenged by Dirtline. Well, that's the last qualifying mark as we stand now. 12th place, then 3.15.62. So 18 on the start line here. Six will miss out. We'll have 12 going through to the, the semi-finals. And now it's uh, nervy moments for Lira Durderlein, who's in the clubhouse, if you will, and seeing if anyone can beat this time of 3.15.62. Up at the top, Oksana Masters. No surprise to see her the quickest on the racetrack. That's at 2.42.54. Lee has been lightning quick too, already with a medal, Lee Pan Pan for China. Second quickest, Kendall Gretsch third, Ma Jing fourth, Anya Vicker in fifth place. So, Bilodo here, the time isn't good enough. 103.76. So that's some 30 seconds away from Derderline's mark. Certainly gave it plenty. Young down to the line for China. Should be in there yeah. comfortably in third spot. Just two and a half seconds. Top spot. So Dudeline pushed out of a qualifying place. China again really quick in these sprint events. Kukla of Poland. 3 10 4 0. 13th. Just not good enough for Kukla. Disappointment for her. Back out. See Erin Martin being given plenty of encouragement out on the course. 
So last qualifier at present in Dira Lisset, 3.10.40. That is the mark to sneak into the top 12 and push Lisette out of a, a qualifying place. We've got Hope Gordon to finish. We've got Erin Martin to finish. This is the second race of a busy day at the Zhang Jaku National Biathlon Centre. And uh, we're watching the, the qualifying race for the women's sprint sitting event. So Gordon, no, 3.35.04, not good enough. Still looking good for Lisette. What can Martin do? I've hope Gordon's philosophy says, and you're not fully dressed unless you're wearing a smile. There you go. Smile or grimace, you decide. Some, some of each, perhaps. And Martin coming down to the line. 3.10.40 was the mark. And uh, she's not going to do it, so Indira Lisset will be our, our last qualifier. A great effort here, though, from Erin Martin, who was last to leave the start gate, last to finish to... Trains with the fellow nurse Heather Galliotalanza in Washington State. A little bit of a coincidence there, both working at the same hospital nurses confirm for you there that uh, masters of the USA China second third fifth and eighth Kendall Gretchen fourth spot there Vicar goes through for Germany Skarstein of Norway also Picton of Canada Chu of China and Lizette just makes it in 12th spot Moving swiftly on. So, a sprint event for the men in the standing category. 25 starters. And, uh, Benjamin Davier of France will lead them off. Followed by Skupian of Poland. And again, a great spread of nations. Right on that first page, they've come from everywhere. States, Asia, Europe. China, of course, well represented. We've got uh, Sigmund of Mongolia and his teammate Batmuk going off 11th and 13th. Batmuk, the flag bearer for Mongolia at the opening ceremony. And also, the Islamic Republic of Iran represented in this one, along with Spain. minute uh, preparation of equipment making sure everything is just so start time for the men of 10.40 so we're 10.40 and 30 seconds in fact for Daviet and just coming up to 10.30 39.30. So, not far away from the start. And the, the men's standing will be quickly followed by the women's. 16 in that women's event, 25 in the men's. Just saw a shot there of uh, Wojcicki waiting patiently. He'll be the fifth out for Ukraine. He's just denied his second gold of these games in the uh, middle distance category. It's a, a biathlon a race earlier here on the programme. Here at uh, Zhang Jaku. There he is wearing 65, just uh, drifting through the, the mass of athletes, coaches and officials there gearing up for the start of this uh, qualification lap in the, the men's sprint event here. So Davier will be first to go. 
biathlon. The sprint champion from the last Paralympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang. It's just not happened for him thus far in the para-biathlon events. And just off the podium in the biathlon sprint, sixth in the middle distance, but he's gone out at a fair old lick here. Natal Skupien of Poland, 32 years of age now, turning 33 in June, was fifth in the long-distance event in the cross-country. He's had a, uh, a seventh in the classic technique in Pyeongchang in the sprint. Eight medals for Germany so far in the Nordic sports here at Beijing 2022. Marco Meyer has one of them. It was a, a silver in the biathlon sprint, so we know he has the speed. Meyer off second in this qualification race. A couple of fourth place finishes in the, the recent world champs in Lillehammer. Oh. And this remarkable young man, Koyoke Taiki, 21-year-old from Toyama, the long-distance gold medalist. He can uh, sustain a good pace for a long time. What about a rapid pace for a shorter time? We'll find out. Davier. Longer distance for the standing event of 1.35 kilometres. Fourth Winter Paralympic Games for this guy, Grigory Vovchinsky. Gold medal in the biathlon sprint, silver medal in the biathlon middle distance. Going for another medal here. Racing with Davier. There's the Turk over the brow of the hill, picks up a, a little bit of speed to, to try and set this reference time. The uh, top 12 will go into the semi-finals. Alexander Erler was uh, one of the good qualifiers four years ago, coming through in fourth position in the early stages of the competition then. Davier coming down to the line. He's our first indication of what will be a good time. So let's see, 244.59. Five Paralympic winter medals down the years for Nitta Yoshihiro. Three of them gold, starting in Vancouver middle distance classic event goes again here Nitta out on the racetrack followed by Ruslan Reiter 22 year old born in Ekaterinburg but uh, training out of uh, Bosman Montana A good base for some of uh, the American competitors on his way nice brisk fluid start to his one lap Kupien. Some 17 seconds outside the uh, time of Maya, who is uh, suddenly the, the new time to beat at 243.67. German. Tavaski. Second Paralympic winters for him. He was 11th in the sprint in Pyeongchang four years ago. 28-year-old from Samadan in Switzerland. 11th in the long-distance race. And for China now, Li Mingyang, bronze medalist in the long-distance event. Koyoke down in a very respectable 249.95. Yeah, that'll be good enough. So, Volchinski going to be outside Myers 243.67. But uh, 
a nice race to just ease into the competition day there for Vovchinsky. Dashdoj Shigmid of Mongolia. He's only 20 to Mongolians in this race. He was there at the World Champs in Lillehammer. Competed in the long and middle distance. Didn't actually enter the, the sprint race, a 10th and a 12th there. Kazakhstan, well represented at these games. Gerlitz gets away down to the line, though. Ela in fifth spot for Germany. And Gambol Batmunk next to go. Twelfth in the long distance, Batmunk. Great tradition, though. It's his third Paralympic winters. Nitta in at 2.56.69, 13 seconds away, looking good at present. It's the top dozen. We will go through into the semi-finals a little later on. You next. You Xiao Bin, one of the uh, younger competitors for China. Right at for the USA down to the line in 254.49. Might be good enough. Big field, don't want to call anything too early. Some of the late starters could force their way into contention. Lip 75 worn by the Italian Christian Toninelli. One of the 30-somethings in the race, 33 is Toninelli, second Paralympic Winter Games. Competed in Pyeongchang. He was 23rd in this uh, sprint event. Had a finish of ninth with the Italian squad in the open four by two and a half relay in Lillehammer. Travaski gives himself a, a chance. Sitting eighth at the moment, but uh, only nine across the line. Yomoto. He's uh, from Sapporo. Great uh, winter sport area. And 26. He was 13th in the long distance event here in the cross country. Raced in uh, Sochi and Pyeongchang. 18th in the sprint in Pyeongchang. 32nd in Sochi. Two. About to come over the line for China. 23 seconds away from Myers Mark. 10th, that's right on the edge at present. Still Marco Meyer sitting atop with 2.50.49. There's a real time there, actual time 2.43.67. So that is the time to be the fastest qualifier. And Gerlitz now. That's a bronze already at these games, 6 7 8. He's been quick in his qualifying lap. That's well played, Alexander Gerlitz slots into fifth place. That's at the moment. Now then, 47, Kjartan Haugen. His Paralympic winter career stretches back all the way to Nagano in 1998, where he was on the podium with a bronze in the men's four. By a five kilometer relay, three time world champion. So the years are against him, no question, but the spirit is still there. Does he still have the speed? We shall soon find out. Batmunk now coming over the line. 21 7 2 down, 11th at present. Again, it's all oh, it's tenuous whether he can make it through. Serafin Drahun. Contrast to Haugen of Norway. He's uh, a, a young man in a hurry at uh, just 16. So go back to the finish and pick up Liu's time, which is going to be pretty good. Should go through with that effort. Really quick. Liu shall be in at 24910. So the challenge. 
is an inter-team one again, really. The Chinese athletes very quick again on this morning of competition. Men's sprint free technique standing qualification race. Wu Gao Shun, 21 year old, away racing. Fifth in the middle distance in the biathlon, sixth in the biathlon sprint. Toninelli of Italy coming down in 3.20 and change. All outside the top dozen, unfortunately for him. Eighty-two is Drew Shea, the 24-year-old from Montana in the United States. Studied at the University of South Carolina, business admin and hospitality. going to be Wang with another quick time, 6.77 away from Myers, 2.4367. But uh, surely going to be good enough that. And uh, Iwamoto, that's disappointing. 30.78 down. Kai, very quick again for the host nation. At the moment, China sitting fourth, fifth, seventh. 84 is uh, Rodolfo Garcia, Rodolfo Garcia of Spain. He's uh, 14th in the long distance event. As Haugen comes through. Just into the top 10, 12 to progress, remember. And the last of our athletes in this qualifier is away from the start gate. 19-year-old from Iran, Abdul Fazl Khatibi Mayne. Great to see him in the race. He was there in uh, Pyeongchang, uh, 21st in the uh, sprint four years ago. So, everyone has either finished or is out on the race course. Current 12th best time would be good enough for a spot in the semis. Nitta Yoshihiro, 25669. Draun is just outside. Agony for him. Last guaranteed qualifier is Wang, by the way, 254.4. Plenty of racing years ahead of Draun, though. The youngest man in the field at 16. We've got uh, competitors out there in their 40s. Wu. Just missing out. So still Nitta Yoshihiro at two five six six nine. And Garcia out on the uh, race course still. is the, uh, the free technique as opposed to the classic. And alternate uh, between uh, games and championships to keep interest in both forms of uh, cross-country skiing vibrant. Born in Bolivia, Paul Macori, Redalad Garcia. His parents moved to Spain when he was very young. So, the women's standing qualifier about to start. 16 competitors. Grace Miller and Nilda Nilsson of the United States and Norway bookending this competition and we're ready for a start we're moving swiftly on as we promised we would <laughs> no time at all between events so Vilda Nilsson then the 
the world champion. Now then, it hasn't quite happened for her so far on the, the Zhang Jacou hill here. But uh, maybe this is her opportunity to pick up a, a bit of speed and really get into her racing groove. Out first, ahead of Lyashenko and Colin over the uh, two Ukrainians. It was a surprising DNF from yeah. her in the long distance event. But here's Lyashenko, who had second for Ukraine. in biathlon events here from Kharkiv, 28-year-old, sets out after Nielsen. They are the same classification and 96% time factoring. So this altitude, maybe that was what sorted her out in that long distance event. Third to go, Alexandra Kononova, the biathlon middle distance silver medalist, 31. She's contributed to this terrific Ukrainian success story so far at uh, Zhang Jaku. A host of medals down the years as we race with uh, Nielsen. Just 21, a fantastic prospect. And now Natalie Wilkie. Well, talk about prospects, and uh, Natalie Wilkie's got plenty. A gold medalist in the long-distance event. Back out to check on Nilsson, see if she's holding a form. Conditions are a little unfamiliar. And this uh, added altitude of well, parts of the course of up towards 1,700 metres. Sydney Peterson now. Yeah, well, we know all about Oksana Masters and Kendall Gretsch, don't we? But in Sydney Peterson, the United States has another uh, para Nordic uh, squad star. Silver in the long distance classic and uh, a great competitor. The first international event was the recent world champs where there were a pair of silver medals. But Peterson goes again here. So we've got uh, Konoshuk not starting, so a little uh, gap in the start area. The Ukrainian not making it to the line. Yeah, Nilsson, who was first to go, still out there uh, on the course, looking to post our first reference time. Six-time world champion, by the way. She's uh, bossed it across all the distances and with the Norwegian team in the relay as well. Now then, here's Farron. Popping across into the shadows of the grandstand to finish off her lap, which is uh, a kilometre and 357 metres. Longer than the sitting course, as we've mentioned. Just to clarify that for you, uh, how these times are going. So 3.13.11 is the factored time. Real time of 3.21.16. 25-year-old Danny Arovich next to go. Hometown Boys, Idaho. Finishes of 13th and 11th in the two para biathlon races in which he's competed so far in the sprint and uh, middle distance races, respectively. Uh, Leah Schenko is going to be outside of Nielsen's mark here for, for three outside, to be precise. And Zhao Shukin gets away. 24-year-old was just out of the medals in the uh, long-distance classic uh, fourth place. over coming through in a good time 316 76 factored well plenty of homemade stars have been made here in these Beijing Paralympic winter games this is one of them Guo Yuji she helped carry the flag into the, the bird's nest stadium the opening ceremony 
She leaves the start gate for her qualifying lap as Wilkie comes in in the quickest time of 3.11.87. So we have our new reference time. She's in good nick, isn't she? As Abe Yurika of Japan heads out onto the course. And the 26-year-old uh, who was eighth in the long distance event gets it going. Wang Bangzhua, 22. Seventh in the long distance. Really strong squad across the board, the Chinese here. Peterson, 4-7-6 away from Wilkie, but that'll be good enough. Face flushed with the effort as we go back to the start area and Li Wei Ling, 26-year-old from Zhao Shuang, been in the sport uh, a couple of years. That's true of a number of the Chinese competitors who've been talent ID'd and brought into the program bringing great credit to the host nation. Just needed the facilities and uh, attract some people to the sport and they can do a job. Next to finish will be Faro. In the slowest time yet. That's it. We're going to lose four competitors only here from the start list in terms of those... Uh, who won't be progressing into the semi-finals. Bigger margin for error, I suppose. Wang Ruo goes next here for China, the last the Chinese athlete to go. There are three teenagers in this race. Wang is one of them, as Arovic finishes in 3.25.43. Sixth place at present, pushing Fadon into seventh. It's still Wilkie. Nielsen and Peterson with our three best times. Grace Miller set to go. The Guangzhou born American. Like many, based in Montana, Bozeman. At a ninth in the long distance event as we go to the finish and Zhao. Good time. She'll be there. Yeah, so she becomes our fifth confirmed qualifier, Xiao. We have Natalie Wilkie, Vilda Nilsson, Sydney Peterson, Alexandra Kononova, and now Xiao Xixing, sure of their spots in the semi finals. And Guo, 12 11 away, not confirmed yet, but uh, soon to be. So they wanted to go a little bit quicker, I think, there, Guo. Grace Miller. And now has that target of 3.23.98, just to be confirmed. And uh, indeed, Badana Konashuk didn't start here. So, Miller will uh, finish last. Second Paralympic Winter Games, 16th in the sprint four years ago in Pyeongchang. So, Shame for Konishuk, you know, uh, 16 starters and 12 to go through. Your odds are pretty good of, of progressing. Abe, 54 seconds behind uh, the Canadian Wilkie. Might be enough, although it's right on the edge for Abe Eureka. down a spot, 32 seconds away. We've got the vision impaired races still to come. And in about uh, five minutes, we keep on schedule here. We 
coming through in 3.41.34. Might be all right. Yeah, so that leaves Abe Eureka in the 12th place at present. 3.46.04 is that last time to beat Grace Miller, giving it all she can around the second half of this uh, 1.35 kilometer course for the standing athletes. Short rise there, takes care of that quickly. Yeah, three Americans in this race. Miller will be the uh, last to finish. We've already seen Arovich come in in 3.24.43. And uh, Peterson in 3.16.63. This is Iwamoto. She'll be outside Abe Eureka's time, her compatriot. So I'm afraid that Iwamoto and Mika will not be going through. Wang now. Oh, just outside. The teammates were cheering her home, hoping she could find something, but she doesn't find quite enough. So, Huang now guaranteed a spot. 3.44.15. Grace Miller. No, she'll be outside. 3.46. So, will not be going through. 42 seconds down, in fact. So, hasn't been uh, the race that she would have wanted in this sprint qualifier for Grace Miller, but uh, we have our 12 qualifiers. Best time from Natalie Wilkie in 3.11.87, all the way down there to... Abe Eureka, who is the last qualifier in 12th place. Vilda Nilsson and Sydney Peterson, next quickest after Natalie Wilkie and uh, Wang, Grace Miller, Iwamoto, Mika miss out and uh, Konoshuk didn't start. Marco Meyer earlier in the men's, uh, top of the standings for progressing. Davye Vyshinsky, Tsai and Yu of China, along with Wang Kawayoki, also there for Japan, Gerlitz of Kazakhstan and Ruslan Reiter of the United States in ninth spot, through to Haugen, Ayla and Yoshihiro, Norway, Germany and Japan completing the qualifiers for you. And they'll go away in two semi-finals. Vision impaired uh, races now, and uh, in the men's side of things, they've got uh, 17 to take the start, headed up by, well, do we need to say, Brian McKeever, the evergreen, ever winning, ever unbeatable Brian McKeever and his guide Russell Kennedy. And Sebastian Moden of Sweden's there, Jake Adikoff of the United States, Messinger of Germany, and uh, Chalonson, Suako, Ukraine well represented here. Garbovsky there for Poland, Inola Finland, Reshetinsky of Ukraine, Oksal of Norway, Yu of China, good Chinese presence here, Xu He, Nelson of the United States, Novitsi of Poland, and Pavel Gil also, and Ariasu Ryohi of Japan. All with a guide. All tackling the same course as the men's uh, standing freestyle. Uh, just under 1.4 kilometers. Yeah, all pretty busy down there, isn't it? There's, uh, athletes, coaches, officials, technical delegates, mix and uh, try and get these athletes away safely, but 
Indeed, in the VI, you mentioned it, Steve, Brian McKeever, the magic man, the most decorated Paralympic cross-country skier of all time, going for more medals. He's already got a gold here. Just to add to the uh, 13, he's won in previous uh, Paralympic Winter Games. That was in the, the long distance. The classic uh, goes again first here. Top eight going through to the uh, final round. McKeever and Moden, who'll go one, two here, finished first and second four years ago. Eric Bay of Norway was the bronze medalist on that occasion, and Jake Adikoff was fourth. So there'll be two semi-finals of four to split those eight qualifiers, as alluded to. Yeah, Brian McKeever off first then, guided by Russell Kennedy at 42. It was one of the big stories previewing these Beijing Paralympic Winter Games. Could he fulfil the golden goodbye? And the answer is... Is so far so good for Brian McKeever. It was a, a brilliant win in the previous cross uh, country race and that long distance event for McKeever. An astonishing run of success that dates all the way back to Salt Lake City. Well, this distance will suit Sebastian Modin of Sweden. He, uh, he likes the shorter distance, he's got plenty of power. Be surprised if he doesn't go through. His guide, Emil Jonsson Haag, made it all the way through to the final four years ago. He'll be hoping to do the same. And McKeever has said he gets up in the morning and goes to bed at night in pain, and he thinks it's just about time he gave that lifestyle away. But what a career. Astonishing. So our medalists in the long distance going off one, two, and three. It was Jake Adikoff finishing silver way racing then in this qualifier in the sprint event racing with McKeever and his guide Russell Kennedy as we return to the start line where Nico Messinger is waiting to be unleashed <laughs> yes the 27 year old won't be holding back here from Freiburg Kiva here with uh, Russell Kennedy. He was quick to give Russell Kennedy some credit. He said he's a good, fast guide. Well, he needs to be to stay in front of McKeever. Well, you might recall controversy was left out of the Canadian Olymp uh, Olympic team. And he was that good. Brissotanello leading out Anthony Chalenson of France. The hunger is still there, of course it is, for McKeever. Big encouragement from the uh, coaches. So to claim a medal, you've got to race three times. It's uh, a question of quick recovery as we check out the departure of Dmitry Suako of Ukraine. And McKeever comes down to the line. This will be the time to consider. 237-34. Beard starting to grey a little for Makiva as Kovalevsky gets set. Yeah, and I tell you, Kovalevsky, silver in the biathlon middle distance event. Third, the Paralympic Winter Games. The journey started in the Sochi. And he was eighth in the uh, middle distance. Yet to race in the, the sprint event. Way here. Accomplished a para biathlete as well. As at three a Paralympic winter medals in biathlon in years gone by as Modin finishes outside the time of McKeever to the tune of just over three seconds. Adikov has yeah. carved a bit off McKeever's time. And so he is now the number one uh, time on the board. 
Jones making a little bit of a statement early on. And kick it all up now for Finland. From Lauka. Finished just out of the medals in a long distance event. A fourth placing for the Finn. Messinger. At, uh, 15 seconds. 12 seconds indeed off the pace of Adikov. After Dmitry Siarko and Anatoly Kovalevsky, third Ukrainian to leave the start gate is Yaroslav Reshetinsky, guided by Kostiantin Yaremenko. 29, Reshetinsky, third Paralympic Winter Games. Best he's done in cross country thus far. The, uh, the fifth, but uh, just off the podium, fourth in the uh, middle distance biathlon. Shannon Son with uh, a good time, just uh, two seconds away from Adikov. He's had his challenges in uh, biathlon events, but that's an impressive effort from him. Good to see. Swarko. Down in 247.38. 17 starters and eight to go through as Yu gets it away for China. 18 year old from Daju. Kovalevsky. It's OK. There's a bit of a gap, really, between the, the top couple. And you've got 236, 237, and then down to 247 for Suarko. Su so, hey. Guided by Diao Chengguo. Fifth in the long distance. Gabowski. We'll finish in 2.4855, 11 seconds away from the best time. It's right on the cusp. Last qualifying mark, 2.4959 at present, set by Mettinger as uh, next to go. Max Nelson. Out of uh, Minnesota. 18-year-old. A lot of promising teenagers at these Paralympic Winter Games. Outside the top eight is Inela. 18 7, 5 down. And uh, six seconds away from Messinger's mark. Levitsky away, guided by Jan Corbin. One of the younger racers out there at 21 from Lasky. Pavel Nowitzki was there at the Lillehammer World Champs. Reshetinsky. Oh, 9th, 13.69 down. He's just outside the top eight. Yeah, eight only to go through. That's confirming that for you. Pavel Gilt. Michal Lander doing the guiding. The two Polish competitors going back to back here. Set out after Novitsi, and then we just have one to come from Japan, Ariasu. Oksal, who was uh, a non starter in a long distance event, um, he was due to take place, take part in that, just didn't manage it. So, last to go then, Ariasu Reahe, guided by Fujita Yuhei at uh, 35. Ariasu, seventh in the long distance race from. Shofu is actually born in uh, San Francisco, but naturalized at the Japanese. You uh, 249, 24. He's stolen into the last qualifying place. He's on the bubble, as they say. Will he sit there or will he be pushed out? So, likely to be the last to finish. Ariyasu Uriahe. Factor time of 99%. So he knows that uh, 
The top eight finish is what it's all about. And Xu at 25101, that's not good enough. Yu Shuang has set the, the new last qualifying mark of 2 minutes 49.24. We've had uh, somebody withdraw here. Is that, uh, is that Pavel Gill? Yeah, it's uh, one of the poles. It's Gill there. What's happened there? It's unfortunate. Nelson won't be there, unfortunately. 23.54 behind Adikov. Five confirmed qualifiers at present. Jake Adikov, Brian McKeever, Anthony Shalinson, Sebastian Modin and Anatoly Kovalevsky. Ariasu hoping to join them. Yeah, it'll be a big push here to get inside 2.49. Women's event due to start in a minute or so, and hopefully we'll get a completed race from Karina Edlinger. She's had a tough time here. Uh, Shishkova, Volta, who's uh, done rather well herself. Be good to see Lynn Kazmaier go round again. And a field of ten and eight to go through. Lorenz Joseph Lampel will be the guide here for Karina Edlinger of Austria. Indeed, it's not been her tournament so far here in Beijing. Bronze medalist in the 7.5K in Pyeongchang, just outside the medals, fourth place in the sprint four years ago. She goes off quickly, the 23-year-old from Salzburg, accomplished the para biathlete as well. Yeah, she's had a couple of DNFs and uh, look to be health reasons or just not feeling right on the day, so we'll look for a better result for her in this one as Shishkova has had a good, strong games, gets ready to go for Ukraine, the 30-year-old gold medalist in the long-distance event. And the VIs. Edlinger, then, pushing through. Doesn't need the guide, it seems, at present. Uh, Leonia Maria Valter, guided by Permin Stricker. Now then, what a game she's had at just 18. The student, two bronzes and a gold medal in the, the middle distance biathlon event. Absolutely brilliant, the, the young Germans so far, coming off the back of a fifth in the mix. Four by two and a half relay at the Lillehammer. The world champs competes in the biathlon as well. So, Valter, a brilliant game. So, too, Lynn Kazmaier. Yes, she's uh, the silver in the long distance event. Kazmaier at 15, one of the youngest at these games. Back out to Edlinger. It's, uh, skiing on her own at the moment, which is um, unexpected. But holding it together. We uh, just want to see her finish a race. It's been a really unhappy time for her so far. There was a bronze medal in the middle distance biathlon race for Wang Yue. She leaves the start gate here, guided by Li Yalin, the 22-year-old. Well, we race again with Edlinger really determines into the tuck for extra speed. She'll be the first to set our reference time here. Rechtenwald of Germany. So, Walter, Kazmaier and Rechtenwald, good, strong representation from Germany. But it is the Austrian we're looking to, to give us a time to chase. She is flying down into the area to approach the home straight. Young 
Chan Ru. Two Chinese athletes in this race after Wang Yue. It's now Yang with her guide Yu Hongshun. And uh, there's a lot of youth in the Chinese squad, Yang at just 20. As we see, Edlinger finish here to post our first reference time in this uh, women's sprint VI qualifier. It's going to be 3.23.38. So Shishkova and the two Germans will chase this down. Here is Chichenko of Ukraine. Just uh, two to come after her. 26-year-old was fifth in the long-distance event in the cross-country. From Bila Shvetva in Ukraine. in the sprint at the World Championships as we check out Shishkova and she's outside the time of Edlinger. Yeah. Only nine seconds outside the time of Edlinger. Very slow there, perhaps just uh, pacing herself. Edlinger looked fast, I must say. <laughs> it's good to see her from her. So... The last to leave the start gate from the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's uh, Elahe Ghalifala as we see the finish of Eli Valta, 3.35.34. Yeah, decent point about Edlinger, it was her pace rather than the others being a little bit slower, I think. Can Edlinger carry it through, though, into the, the semis and hopefully for her the final? Kazmaier just uh, easing off towards the line. Must have been fairly confident that what she was doing was going to be good enough. Remember, it's most of these athletes are going through. Eight out of ten. Yeah, it's a great encouragement here for Elahe Kolifala and her guide Fazana Lesaltani. 25-year-old uh, Iranian uh, competed in Pyeongchang, 11th in the sprint, competed in just the, the one event four years ago. But uh, here she is representing the Islamic Republic of Iran. Wang to post her a qualifying time of 3.4619. But indeed, we're going to lose only two athletes here from this race going into the semi-finals. Confirmed qualifiers, Karina Edlinger, Lynn Kazmaier, Oksana Shishkova. And that seem to be confirmed also Leonie Valter and Wang Yue. Rechten Vald, 13-2-8 down on Edlinger. Goes into fifth place, so that pushes Wang down a spot. And uh, Yang also. 137, Yang Chan Ru. The athletes seem to have decided that uh, approach to the finish line on the their extreme right is where the better snow is to be had. Not exposed to the sun, maybe it's just a little bit firmer, not softening up as quickly. That makes sense indeed as Young comes down in 343 exactly and into sixth spot. So the current qualifying mark, 34619. That's Wang Yue's time. And that's Aneta Gorska, guided by Catherine Spadenberg. Sole pole in this race, the 21 year old. Eighth in the biathlon sprint, Kachenko in at. Uh, 34658 holds eighth. Well, that's the spot. There's just uh, two out there. And Gorska is the one to consider. 346.19 to be certain. 346.58 to beat Tchenko. Um, she won't do it. Skip 
Really good lad, though. <laughs> yeah. In a moment, we'll have our eight confirmed qualifiers for the semi finals. Unfortunately, Aneta Gorska will not be one of them. Still have El Arhe Golifala of Islamic Republic of Iran to finish this qualifier. But uh, I think we know the identity of the eight. Athletes will be going through to the semi-finals. This is the uh, qualification lap in the women's sprint for vision-impaired athletes. Big Brilliant. effort here from Goli Fala. Yeah, a small gap in the program as we get set for the next stage of competition uh, due to get underway at uh, top of the clock at 12 midday the first of the semi-finals in the men's sitting category and we're uh, just after tick after half past 11 local time that's the scene around Zhang Jaco which has served so well through the Olympics and Paralympic Winter Games. So just the one to finish in the uh, vision impaired category for the women. And then we can consider who's left in which category and who'll go right through to the finals. B4 in the vision impaired finals, men and women. Just grabbing hold of the tip of the stock for this downhill section. Golifala. Yeah, Golifala, the polar opposite of Karina Edlinger, who didn't need the guide in uh, her lap. Has to let go there, can't be towed up the hill, of course. Yes, it came as a bit of a surprise, that uh, lap from Edlinger on a couple of levels. Most pleasingly, the fact that she looked in such good form, having been out of sorts in other races. Kalifala, the opening ceremony flag bearer. Well, the Islamic Republic of Iran, so already a memorable week here for the 25-year-old. So she really wants to be a trailblazer for vision impaired athletes back home and has picked up multiple awards for her contribution to sport for those with a visual impairment. There's this uh, little incline before into the home straight and we'll have Golifala across the line before too long, but we know that Edlinger, Kazmaier, Shishkova, Volta, Rechtenwald, and Young, plus Wang Yu is there, and uh, Tachenko, although she doesn't have a queue next to her name just yet, will have shortly. Yeah, this is the final athlete completing the, the sixth race, the sixth qualifying event here on this uh, beautifully sunny morning in the Zhang Jaco Mountains at the National Biathlon Center. More para cross country medals to be awarded deeper into the day here as there's a very commendable finish for Arahe Golifala of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Finishes in last place here, tenth spot 709.45. So she and uh, Aneta Gorska 
are the skiers who miss out on a place in the semi-finals. Confirmation then of the fastest time set by the Austrian Edliger 323 uh, 323.38 then Kasmaya Walter Rechtenwald with uh, Shishkova Yang Wang and uh, Kachenko. Golofala came to compete and complete this race. And she's achieved that, so all credit to her and Gorska, of course. Adakov, Makiva and Shalanson going through as the top three in the men's vision impaired. And then Modin of Sweden, Kovalevsky and Swako of Ukraine. 2.36.72 the top time. Gabowski and Yu of Poland and China joining them in the semi-final stage. Nowitzki of uh, Poland, who we saw unable to complete uh, his lap. So the officials are just getting everything ready.
Hasn't been long for the athletes to draw breath between qualifying and semi-finals. This is the sprint category for sitting, standing and vision impaired athletes in the cross country. And we're very much looking forward to this next stanza of the day's competition into the semi-finals for the sitting athletes, men first of all, and uh, a select group of spectators allowed in and they'll be uh, in for some fine entertainment in the next few minutes, that's for sure. We've got uh, the two men's sitting semis to come. Then the standing categories. And uh, then the vision impaired. Semi-finals times two for each. And then we'll be into the finals. Six gold medals to be decided. Equal opportunities in competition for the men and the women as it should be of course yep really busy day of racing here at the Zhang Jaku National Biathlon Centre 24 races all in if we include the, the qualifiers the semi-finals and the gold medal events to come a little bit later quick fire here the uh, sprint races and we saw a really fast time from Zheng Peng in the men's sitting category, 214-17. Chinese squad have been really quick over the course of the, the week of the Paris snow sports here at these Paralympic Winter Games. And the temperature just keeps rising up to a heady <laughs> nine degrees now up yeah. in the mountains of Zhang Jacquard. That's not going to keep the snow in, in great order, but... Uh, We'll get across the line with these games, I'm sure, here at uh, Zhang Zhikou. And the first of the semi-finals about to come. You will mention Zheng Peng as the, uh, the top qualifier. Just an explanation down the right there. The, the starting order is determined by their classification. And so it will be the first uh, three across the line because the time factoring has been considered in their start time. So... That uh, makes it a more exciting finish. And just a word on Zheng. He, he did make the semi-finals four years ago, but finished fifth in that second semi-final in Pyeongchang, so missed the final. But here's a chance for him to, to make amends right here, right now, alongside Romilet, Restemeyer, Ribeira, Pike, Yu and Rad in this first semi-final. So Zheng will go away with the 12 second advantage over Romilet. Westermeyer at 16 seconds along with Pike and at 22 seconds Yu and Rad. And their big numbers uh, reflect what uh, qualifier they were. Little fist bump there, nice to see <laughs> between uh, Westermeyer, Ribeira and Romilet. Brazil and Italy. Rivals on the course, friends off it. That's the credo. Yeah, Romelay there. He was silver medalist in the, the middle distance race in the recent world champs in Lillehammer. All about getting it right on the day, pacing yourself. It's a big one. Zheng Peng, the 29-year-old gold medalist in the, the long-distance event. Second Paralympic Winter Games. The, the more seasoned athletes in this formidable Chinese delegation. So, Romilly just three. asking the camera yeah. to get out of the way. It's, it's coming. The start isn't far away. It's a... Uh, in the zone now, no distractions needed, or required, or wanted. So Zheng will go away first. In bib number one, then Romela in eight, Westermeyer Rivera in five, Pike is in 12, Liu in four, Rad is in nine. Well, 
there's no confusion whatsoever amongst the athletes about how this is going to go. So we're underway then in the first of two semi-finals in the men's sitting category. This is sprint racing. It's Zheng Peng of China. Quickest time, 2.14.17 with his factored time in qualifying. That is the mark to beat. Romola got away. Now Westermeyer, Rebrera. Then Pike, Yu and Rad. So they're all out on the course. And... It is uh, Zheng who leads them. First three to go through. Yeah. Effectively a pursuit race here. A different... Uh, the sporting categorizations have determined the starting order. So Zheng Peng, 86% factored time. Just to sort of give you a... a a, a layman's explanation, 2.36 was his real time in the uh, qualifiers, but with that 86% factored time, that's down to 2.14.17, and that became the mark to beat. Colin Cameron second quickest, by the way, and uh, Mao Zhongwu, but Zheng still out in front here in this first semi. Romelet is in pursuit, and then it's the Brazilian, uh, the crazy pig, as he likes to be known. Christian Westermeyer Rebrera. Pike is in 12. And four is Liu. And Rad making some progress up on the inside there. So, according to their classifications, the field should compress, should Constantino back in again after that uh, start. He's made allowances for their classifications. But he's got a little bit of work to do, has Aaron Pike at the back of the field. Yeah, Pike. Qualified in last place, he was the, the last of 12 to make it into the semis, 227 dead. So Zheng Peng, still the athlete to catch here. You're watching the uh, sitting, the semi-final sprint event. Uh, men racing here, the women will come later. It's a busy day of racing at the Zhang Jaku National Biathlon Centre, but... A red hot and exciting one. It's Zheng Peng still for China. He's pushing hard into the straight. This course just under a kilometre, and it is the first three across the line. No factoring to be done once they get to the finish. And now they're starting to catch him. Closing in is Liu Shizhu of China in four. Pike looks to be out of it at the rear of the field. Romelet has been passed, but. Uh, Zheng is there, first three to go, and China will have a couple. Liu is there, and Rudd makes it as well. Taras Rudd. So there's the first of the semis. And now they'll instantly think about, OK, recover, get the right uh, liquids inside, and uh, think about the chance for a medal. Job done. Yep, yeah. Romelu misses out, Ribeiro misses out, Aaron Pike misses out. So two Chinese racers in this first semi-final go through. We've got three in the second, by the way. It could be another bumper day for China in terms of medals in the Nordic events here at Beijing 2022. Confirmation then. Zheng Peng, Lu Zishu go through. And Taras Rad makes it as well. Just ahead of Giuseppe Romale. China, China and Ukraine into the semi-final in the men's sprint. So we're just a couple of minutes away from the second semi. Two Canadians, a Ukrainian and three from China in this second one. Mao Zhongwu will lead them off. From Derek Zaplatinsky of Canada and then Colin Cameron. Only a two second gap between Mao and Zaplatinsky, then another 14 seconds back to Cameron and Baal of Ukraine. 
And the two Chinese competitors at the back of the field will go on 22 seconds, Wang and Zhu. And there is confirmation of that. Four men in their 30s and the two at the back in their mid-20s. Zaplatinsky, the 11th qualifier. That's why he's wearing 11. And there's a towering figure of Colin Cameron. Mr. Muscles, 7th qualifier, Pablo Bal of Ukraine. Just visualising a good lap. What he's got to do. And he's got to get home as one of the first three. That's the simple assignment. Gives the race a different complexion, doesn't it? With uh, no factoring at the end, just at the start. Yep. Staggered start. So it becomes something of a, a mini pursuit race, really. And it uh, makes for real great action down that uh, final straight. So semi-final two is underway. Mao Zhongwu. And big number three for China with Wang Tao and Xu Yunfeng to come later. Hot on the heels is Zaplatinsky second off. And it'll be Cameron who is second quickest behind Zheng Peng's qualifying time to go thereafter. We have Pablo Bao in the race two for Ukraine. But this is the second semi-final in the men's sitting sprint here at Beijing 2022. So Cameron coming up to this left-hand bend and then the climb just ahead of Pablo Bal is trying to hold on to the Canadian he's digging in hard and powerfully is Cameron second highest qualifier behind Zhang who went in the first of the semis but still Mao out in front this is really slow soft snow they're negotiating here Cameron makes it look so effortless doesn't he he's already a bronze medalist in the the long distance category, the 33 year old from Canmore, Alberta. Comes up on the inside of Zaplatinsky and has got him covered and will set out now after Mao Zhong Wu. But if he knows he's in the top three and uh, he maybe save a little bit of effort at the end. Mao has to be concerned about how fast they're catching him, but he was the third fastest qualifier and they look to have cleared out those two in uh, Cameron and Mao. Yeah, Cameron has Mao in his sights, no doubt about that. That's that uh, sweeping right-hander. And then 11, that's Zapatinsky, second Canadian in this race. And three Chinese, remember, as well. And this really is a race for the third qualifying spot because these two look to be doing it well enough. Cameron uh, just careful there not to accidentally nudge Mao. He sort of pulled out of a... A push to make sure he didn't do that, and he is just rattling it in. Uh, now, Cameron, he's flying. Uh, no nonsense, just swatted Mao Zhongwu aside on that corner. Indeed, careful to sort of not force the collision, but Mao just feeling the, the breath of Cameron on the back of his neck, and now Cameron has pushed way past, and he looks so in control, doesn't he? Colin Cameron, but it's Mao Zhongwu in second place in the battle for third and the last qualifying spot for the final is hotting up. Oh, Cameron can even afford a look over his shoulder. He's got it well under control. Thought he might ease down to the line. He can afford to do that, but the race is for third. Mao will get second. Off to the left, it's Zhu. Will he get there? It's Wang, I think. Oh, Wang's done it. Two more Chinese qualify. Colin Cameron, though, that was an absolutely brilliant overtaking manoeuvre on Mao Zhongwu to take this second semi-final. I would love to have seen three go through the uh, spectators here, but that's not going to be the case from the second semi. But they have got two from the first, so they will have four in the final, along with Colin Cameron and Taras Rudd. So we'll have confirmation of that uh, for you in a moment. There it is, Cameron, too strong, too good, too quick. Mao and Wang 
claiming the other spots into the final for the sitting category for the men. That's great racing, isn't it? Love watching this. It's fascinating. Fantastic scrap to the line, but Cameron, how smooth did he look there? Mm. Really did look good. So, confirmation then of our four Chinese qualifiers into the final of the men's sprint in the sitting category, plus Tarith Rad and plus the impressive looking Colin Cameron. Cameron and Rad qualifiers for the final four years ago. All right, let's uh, keep it coming as we move across to the women's event. First of two semi-finals, same deal. Top three athletes move into the final. So on the start line, semi-final one, two more Chinese races in Ma Jing and Wang Shi Yu. Plus we have the formidable United States duo of Gretsch and Masters, plus Indira Lisset, who qualified in last place, and uh, representing South America, the brilliant Brazilian Aline Dos Santos Rocha. So, Ma Jing will be going off at the same time as Aline Dos Santos Rocha, because they have the same sporting the categorizations LW 10.5 and then 12 seconds later the 35 year old Norwegian Indira Lisset Kendall Gretsch 17 seconds down Oksana Masters seven seconds after that along with Wang Shi Yu so they're about set to go. Masters has to go 24 seconds behind Ma. <laughs> Setting up the Jayo chant in the stand. The uh, Chinese spectators hoping. So more good results here. Yep. We lost six athletes after that qualifier. Top 12 went through from that qualifying lap race. Masters is the carryover champion from Pyeongchang. Oksana Masters, the uh, defending Paralympic champion, defending world champion as well. None from the other Lillehammer. None of the other finalists from uh, Pyeongchang are, are here. <laughs> Away go the first two. Ma. And Santos. Yeah, so that's China versus Brazil. The, the first battle, the first story in this opening semi-final. Going to be great to see Masters and Gretsch give chase. Indira Lisset will uh, struggle a little, I feel, here, but that's Masters getting away, wearing bib at number 13. And Gretsch is in 16. Ahead of her. There's two at the uh, front of the field, went off together, Marjing and Aline uh, Dos Santos Rocha. Uh, Masters, by the way, was uh, quickest in the, the qualifying lap. It's a really slow section of the course here, uphill. Snow giving way to the conditions. Gretchen Masters starting to make a real progress on the field here. Yeah, that's uh, Masters around on the outside. And uh, she has Alinda Santos Rocha and Marging in her sights. And that's uh, Lisette struggling a bit at the uh, back of the field. A look at Masters powering on through into second place away from the tracks as well. 
That lovely smooth action, poles into the snow, propulsion, and she drifts past Ma Jing as though she's not there. Oksana Masters looking absolutely magisterial again here in the women's sprints. Gretsch keeping to the inside of the trail and followed there by Dos Santos Rocha. It's all about Masters. Taking uh, the wider line and covering a little bit more territory out there was uh, Kendall Gretsch, but that's where she wanted to be, perhaps detecting better snow. And uh, well, for us to question what Gretsch does out on the track, she knows what she's doing and she just uh, corners away into second place there and nearly lost some balance, but it uh, looks like she's fine. Masters just dominating this first semi final in the women's sprint setting. Yeah, that's such a problematic hairpin, isn't it? It's where Cameron was able to take uh, Zhang in that uh, that men's semi. But uh, Masters, gold medal in the biathlon sprint, two silvers. They came in the uh, middle distance biathlon and the, the long distance cross country race. But Masters will be fighting it out again for another medal. And she will be the big favourite when we come to the final of this sprint event. She has absolutely blitzed it in this first semi-final. Oksana Masters over the line first to go through. Kendall Gretsch coming up as well. But this has been all about Masters as we uh, suspected it might have been. She'll be uh, boosted by Gretsch's performance here. She's going to come in second and make the final. So two from the US go through and it was Wang in 20 they start at the back of the field with Masters who managed to come through Arjing just faded a little and it was a, a tough semi for Indira Lizette of Norway She's just making her way down to the line now. Yeah, did well to make it into the semi-final full stop, did uh, Indira Lisset. Over the line last in this first semi. So, Masters and Gretsch, one and two. Nothing to suggest anyone can uh, get amongst Masters and Gretsch in the hunt for medals in the sprint. A brilliant performance from Oksana Masters, rather like Cameron. And the uh, men's semi looked in complete control in hot pursuit of those who set off ahead of it, but no problem when it came down to it. So there we have it, Masters, Gretsch and Wang Shiyu. United States and China progressing to the final in the women's sprint sitting out of that first semi. No joy there for Ma. Santos Rocha or Lizette. Second semi coming up in a moment. Here it is. Young and Lee and Chu for China. And then we've got Anja Vicker of Germany, Skarstein of Norway and Picton of Canada. Three more to go through. So Yang goes at zero, two seconds behind her, Lee and Vicker. And at 14 seconds goes Skarstein. And 26 seconds, Picton and Chu. <laughs> yeah, Ling Pan Pan there, the 30 year old Chinese. One minute. Bronze in the uh, long distance event. Li Pan Pan, second fastest qualifier behind Masters. Vicker was the sixth fastest qualifier. <laughs> Smile never too far from her face. Just loves competing, as does Skarstein. Got to love a happy athlete. Regardless of the outcome, it seems they can find the good side of things. Canada's Picton. Great to see her 
in this semi-final. Tenth Hebei qualifier China. In, sorry, tenth highest qualifier is Picton and Chu, eleventh. So it'll look to big task ahead of them to get through but they might so away goes bib number 15 yang hong zhong for china and just two seconds back it's lee pan pan her compatriot and anya vicar now then we know that uh, vicar has a really strong finish in it she uh, produced a brilliant final 200 meters or so to win bronze in the middle distance event in the biathlon and there goes Vicar chasing down those two Chinese at the head of the field and then in hot pursuit at Skarstein of Norway and so Yang and Lee led them away Vicar has just attached herself to the back of those two at the front now this is the testing section of this one lap they come into some slow slushy snow around this bend and up this climb it's about to confront them and uh, they really do need to dig in and push hard it's not long to have to put up with it but it has found a few out Vicar taking the inside track there hoping to come up beside Lee Pan Pan yeah, Vicar holding those two Chinese athletes just ahead of Lee Pan Pan and Yang Hongshong, our race leader, Birgit Skarstein, digging in the 33-year-old, massively accomplished a para-rowing champion in that particular summer sport discipline. She went five years unbeaten into the, the Tokyo Paralympics last year and then carried off the gold medal. Will she be in another a Paralympic final, this time in the Winter Games in para cross country? It's still the uh, Chinese leading the way. Uh, Yang hold. and Lee. Yeah, Yang's holding that margin over Lee. Vicar back into her rhythm, but they're starting to haul her in from behind as Skarstein and Picton and Chu see what they have to do. Top three only to go through. And Yang has cleared out somewhat over Lee. Quite a gap back to Vicar. He kicks to the outside left. Well, if they play their cards right here, uh, China will have three of the six in the final with uh, Wang Shi Yu's qualification from that first semi. But, uh, of course, Oksana Masters and Kendall Gretsch away in that final. Tight turn for Lee Pan Pan there. And there's Vicar, but look at Skarstein right on her heels. And as at 22, picked it as well. Oh, uh, the race for third is what we're focusing on now as Young and Lee make their way into the straight. Uh, they look to be safe. Just a little look over the shoulder there for Young to see where Lee is and the pursuers who are gathering in Vicar. It'll be Skarstein or Picton or Chu who gets that third spot. That's the question. Well, there goes Yang. Yeah, she could afford a little look over the shoulder. The gold medalist in the long distance event. Yang Hongxiong hitting the home straight. Great noise as well from the grandstand. So Lee's... Lee Pan Pan just behind as Skarstein come through. Lee is going to be under a little bit of pressure perhaps by the chasers. Maybe not. The finish line might be too close. It's Look... Picton. Picton's taken. Skarstein. Yang pushing down to the line. She'll be safe. Lee will be as well. And it looks like uh, Christina Picton of Canada so China one China two and Picton comes over for the Canadians just ahead of Chubei Bay what a finish from Chu, by the way yes just ran out of roads another 10 meters or so and we'd have had another Chinese qualifier but Picton makes it Vicar faded so too Skarstein and it's China one and China too. So with Wang, that will be three of the finalists from the home nation. Well. She led the whole way through, wire to wire. Yang Hongshong 
and uh, starting two seconds behind her, Lee Pan Pan did it as well. Uh, Picton made up all that time, started 26 seconds down the Canadian, but qualifies for the final in third place. So we know the identity now of the six athletes that will contest the medals in the women's sprint amongst the sitting athletes. Masters and Gretsch will go for the United States. The three Chinese, Li Pan Pan, Yong Hongshong and Wang Shiyu and Christina Picton will look to replicate her fast finish when we get to the final. So more semi-finals to come in our other categories, the standing, the classification and the VI. First up is the men's standing. Of course, we're racing over the sprint distance here. China, Kazakhstan, Germany, United States and Japan are the uh, nations involved here. Liu Xiaobin and Kai Jiayun from the host nation. Alexander Gerlitz, Marco Meyer, those two with a medal already earlier in these games. Ruslan Reiter and Nita Yoshihiro. So it'll be Liu Xiaobing starting at zero. Two finishes in the biathlon event so far. He was 13th in the uh, sprint. And uh, starting nine seconds uh, behind Liu is Alexander Gerlitz, bronze medalist already. And then Marco Meyer has a silver. The 22-year-old uh, raced brilliantly in the uh, biathlon sprint event. So we know that he has speed. Kai Jiayun for China, also a, a silver medalist. That was in the, the long distance cross country. Ruslan Reiter qualified superbly for the uh, United States. Two biathlon finishes so far, 12th in both the sprint and the middle distance and the, the veteran that is Nita Yoshihiro, the 41-year-old, who has uh, been racing for the best part of two decades now. A previous gold medalist in uh, cross country at the uh, Paralympic Winter Games. It's 12 years, actually, since he got his gold in the sprint in Vancouver. 12 years older, 12 years wiser. Can he do it again? The first of two semi-finals here about to get underway in the uh, men's sprint amongst standing athletes. So the course uh, a little bit longer than for the sitting category, up towards 1.4 kilometres. And they'll whip around it in pretty smart fashion. There's no point holding back at this point. Great shot there of the facility here with those ski jumping hills in the background. Produced a tremendous excitement, one or two stories. And uh, no little controversy as well in the uh, Winter Games just uh, last month. And plenty of uh, new chapters in Paralympic Winter Games history being written at the Zhangjiakou National Biathlon Centre here over the past few days. Terrific, exciting racing. Real crescendo finishing here being produced by the athletes. And we look for more of the same here in the men's sprint. Meyer, the fastest qualifier. As uh, Yu gets us away in the first of the semi-finals for the men's sprint. Then it'll be Gerlitz. And two seconds behind him, Meyer, Tsai, Reiter and Nitta. Yep, there goes the Kazakhstani girl, it's bronze medal in the uh, biathlon uh, middle distance event. So they're all away racing. There's that uh, big lead being enjoyed by Liu at present, but to expect him to be reeled in. We're looking for the top three only 
to go through to the final from this first semi. Lou was the fifth fastest qualifier, so he's some chance of making it through, even if a, a couple catch him. But, uh, he's going to have to ski the race of his life here. A nine-second margin between him and uh, Gerlitz at the start. And then the four that went on 11 seconds. Maya, Tsai, Raita and Nitta. Yeah. Kai Jayun just moving up into second place. 29 Liu still, but uh, we can see the, the pursuit pack. That's uh, Maya up into third, followed by Gerlitz. Maya has moved into position here, just chasing down the, the two Chinese skiers. Coming around the bend there in third place is Maya. He's well positioned, isn't he? He's got uh, the other two in his sights. And uh, as the leading qualifier, you'd expect him to be doing this. Go yes. through comfortably. Gone past Liu now. Has Kai in his sights. And now Gerlitz. Nicely positioned there on the outside as well. 36, that's Nitta Yoshihiro. A great competitor at 41, but you just wonder if there's the endurance, the stamina and the speed in those legs for that final surge that is required here to finish in the top three. Writer towards the back of the field, who was the ninth qualifier. 32, there is Gerlitz. And they pulled away. They've got it sorted out pretty early, haven't they? Yeah. If it stays like this, they can comfortably see at home, not particularly worry about which of the three finishes one, two, three, as long as they go through. Yeah, Liu has uh, faded badly, so it's Kai, it's uh, Maya, it's Gerlitz here. And barring a catastrophe, you're looking there at our three qualifiers for the final from this first semi. Uh, second lot of six are readying themselves to go in the second semi-final. But it's Kai, it's uh, Maya, it's uh, Gerlitz. Just in uh, pursuit there behind Nitta Yoshihiro, but he's got too much to do. So Kai roared on by the home faithful. Well, was that a little wave? <laughs> he's, he's, doing, <laughs> he's, he's doing very well here. Yeah. It just seems like uh, <laughs> that, that Meyer is just going to coast in and just save a bit. Easing up and enjoying the roar of the crowd. Kai Jayun to win this semi-final. And indeed just coasting in and a nice little fist bump there from Meyer and uh, Gerlitz. Uh, second and uh, third qualifiers. Kai does it for China. So China, Kazakhstan and Germany. Kai Gerlitz and Meyer to go through to the final for the men's sprint freestyle standing. Kai there started 11 seconds back with Marco Meyer, Nita Yoshihiro, Ruslan Reiter. They all went off at the same time. But Kai was the athlete who uh, had the pace and had the speed. Maya very much in control, decent race management. Oh, and you just mentioned it, doesn't matter about the order, does it? Just uh, do what you need to do. <laughs> Get that bare minimum finish. As bye-bye Kai as he <laughs> went past his teammate there in, in Lou. And why wouldn't you savour the moment? Just 21. And here these Chinese athletes are performing in front of their own supporters at the Paralympic Winter Games. China, Kazakhstan and Germany, one, two and three are qualifiers, our first three qualifiers for the men's sprint standing final. Quite pleased with himself, Kai, and he's entitled to be, I guess, too, going through to a final. And now the second of the semis, and Koyoki Taiki of Japan, Wang of China, Davier of France, Bovshinsky, Ukraine, Haugen of Norway, and Ayla of Germany. Kawayuki Taiki, already a gold medalist at these games. He won the long distance event. Can he make it a double? 
well, has to win this first to be in with a fighting chance. Wang and uh, Davier hasn't quite happened yet for Benjamin Davier at these games. More than accomplished, though, the 32-year-old uh, and Vovchinsky, the Ukrainian. Already two medals, a, a gold and a silver. Kjartan Hagen still doing it at age 47. Alexander Ayla. Oh, compared to Ayla. Hagen is a young gun. Ayla, 52, would you believe? 16th in the biathlon sprint. Unusual split bronze medals. Uh, four years ago in this category with uh, Mark Arendt and Ikat Tuomisto of Finland, Mark Arendt of Canada, but uh, not to be seen here in this one. It's hard not to like Kawayoke, a, a young, enthusiastic Japanese skier. Who already got a taste of victory. Can he just push through to a final. Koyoke and Wang go on zero, then Davier, then Wolfschinski, Haugen and Ayla. Away we go, second of the semis in the men's standing. Davier is on his way. And now Wolfschinski, Haugen and Ayla complete the field, all going on 11 seconds. First three to go through. On the right there is Koyoke of Japan. And to our left, in that 31, Wang Chenyang. Yep. Front two, the two youngest in the field as well. And to just 20, Wang Chenyang there, looking to hold off Kawayoki. Eighth in the long distance events, the skier from Shizhua Hang. He was there in Pyeongchang four years ago. 22nd in the uh, sprint, best at finish, was an eighth in the world champs. That was four years ago in Finsterau, Germany, with a Chinese squad in the four by two and a half relay. And Kawayoki has just been dropped as uh, Davier pushes through the field. Yeah, second fastest qualifier, Benjamin Davier, in a 2.44.59. So he has quickly gobbled up the field here, and uh, they'll do well. I think uh, Koyoke and Wang to hold on. Only half a second separated the Japanese and Chinese skiers in qualifying. But they're under pressure now from uh, Wolfschinski. Yeah, Davier pulled out to a big lead. Look at that. Above his uh, Chinese rival, Davier the man who has scored three gold medals, two of them in uh, biathlon four years ago in Pyeongchang, and he was with the French squad in the Open 4x2.5 relay. He took off the top title in Korea Republic as well in 2018. Here comes Vovchinsky, the class of the 33-year-old pushing through, and the Ukrainian moves into second place ahead of Kawayoki at present. But it's Davier who leads, and leads comfortably. Haugen of Norway also making an impression from the back there. But uh, it's uh, all about Davier. He's got this one safely in his keeping. Wolfschinski looks to be secure as well. And uh, Koyoki coming under pressure from Haugen. Wolfschinski with a decent lead over the, the chasing athletes there. Koyoki and Haugen. Ayla nowhere, by the way, at the back of the pack for Germany. Uh, Davier has uh, managed this tremendously. He's going to qualify, but uh, Vovchinsky right up with him. Vovchinsky was uh, a couple of seconds slower in qualifying, but uh, might have been holding back there. Certainly in a good position here to go through with Davier. As Haugen has come through into third position, I don't think there's much that uh, uh, enthusiastic Koyoki can do about it. Finishing straight then at the end of this second semi-final in the uh, men's sprint for standing athletes, Vovchinsky and Davier. You can go over first. No, you can. Says one to the other, and it's going to be Davier from Vovchinsky and Haugen through for Norway. 
At age 47, he will compete in another Paralympic Winter Games final. It's France, it's Ukraine, it's Norway who go through. And Haugen had to push it really hard to keep Kawayoki back in fourth position. Then came Ila and Wang. But uh, coasting to the line were Davier and Volshinsky trying to keep something in reserve for the big one. As the clouds gather a little over uh, Zhang Jiko now, that was expected. It'd be a bit of a build-up, but not much weather in it in terms of precipitation. I certainly hope there's no rain. Because it doesn't feel like it's going to snow. Too warm for that. Well, Davier made his uh, move very early on. Try as they might, Koyoki and Wang couldn't hold them at bay. Yes, yeah, so they're like two polite chipmunks there. You go, no, you go. Oh, I insist. No, you go. <laughs> yeah, just doing the bare minimum. And uh, you just said it, Steve, keeping plenty back for the big one later, the final. Confirmation then, Davier of France, Vovchinsky of Ukraine, Haugen of Norway go through to the final from semi-final two in the men's sprint for standing athletes. Maya, Davier, Vovchinsky, Ty, Gerlitz, Haugen. Be a good field. Time to be wasted into the equivalent women's event in the first of the semi-finals. Gives us athletes uh, from China, Japan, Canada, Ukraine, USA and Poland. <laughs> That's a good mix, isn't it? And all in their 20s, save for uh, Kononova, the experienced Ukrainian. Natalie Wilkie was the fastest uh, qualifier. And uh, she goes... At 13 seconds, Zhao will lead them away. Abe Yurika. Was the 12th and last qualifier. Wilkie, all smiles, all confidence. Yeah, Wilkie, the long distance gold medalist. Been a great games for her so far at just 21. United States the skier Danny Arovic. Iveta Faron got through, the 22-year-old from Novi Targ in Poland. Abe Eureka starting 11 seconds behind Zhao Zhixing. Well, Zhao can do it in the sprint. She already has a bronze in the biathlon. We're away. First of the semi-finals for the women. Freestyle standing. And Zhao gets the Jio call from the crowd. See if they can get her home in this one. And again, it's the first three to go through. Abe, Wilkie, Kanonova, Arovic and Farron all on the course now. 13 seconds between Zhao and the back three, the back four, in fact. Wilkie, Kanonova, Arovic and Farron all going on 13 seconds. So. How long can Xiao hold them off? We'll keep moving up into second place. Effectively a pursuit race as they go after Xiao Zhihing there. Natalie Wilkie wearing bib at 37. That's 40. Coronova moving up into third place. Uh, next challenger there, Iveta Faron wearing at 45, but uh, we're racing there with Zhao Zhixing. She knows this facility. She's from Zhang Zhaku. She has trained here. She knows the snow. She knows the conditions. And with that medal already under her belt from earlier in these games, she's riding well here in this semi-final in the women's sprint. So in single file, they make their way around this course. And Still Zhao. Can hear the skis behind her, though. And the closest of them 
As, as expected is Natalie Wilkie of Canada, joined by Kononova. Two at the back of the field there, Alovic and Theron might be struggling to make an impression over the second half of the lap because they've cleared out. They're the same classification as uh, Wilkie and Kononova. Kononova. Hope, I suppose, the Jow fades. Yeah, that's the hope now for our, our back three athletes. Kononova just clinging on to third place at present. It's still Fadon in pursuit. And then Arovic shutting her down. And Kononova, there, the Ukrainian, the 31-year-old the silver in the middle distance biathlon event. Wilkie goes through, looking to just comfortably secure this place in the final. Who's to join up? Once you get a sense of the pace and the, the strategy of the race, then uh, don't spend any more energy than you have to with another really important three or so minutes in the final to come. And it's not that long in coming either. So recovery and keeping something in reserve, two really important considerations through this semi-final as Wilkie just glances over the shoulder and sees that all is good. Yeah, Canada have three gold medals in the Nordic events so far at Beijing 2022. Wilkie has one of them in good company with Mark Arendt and Brian McKeever. The uh, legend McKeever, the others two stand atop of the podium we will keep bringing it home looks nice and comfortable here the 21 year old and it's going to be safely into the final of the sprint event for standing athletes Kononova moving up into second place 12 years on from her gold in vancouver still doing it so wilkie a bronze medalist four years ago behind nilsson and an NPA athlete. Again, look over the shoulder. No problems, really. Coasting down. Just a training run, the back half of this lap. A little bit more urgent for those behind her. And uh, Zhao is going to make it behind Kononova. China have another finalist in Zhao Zixing. Canada, Ukraine, and China then go through. It wasn't to be, sadly, for Dani Arovic, Abe, Eureka, and Iveta Fadon. Wilkie for 11 goes through. At the quickest time from semi final one here in the women's sprint. It's significantly slower than the qualifying time of 3.11. That's uh, real time 3.19. So a little bit of an adjustment there, but not much. That's uh, they were really taking it easy over the latter stages. Yeah, it was a a slow semi-final, but uh, they won't mind about that. Plenty matter. of uh, energy still to be expended, of course, in the one that matters a little later on, on this busy day of racing at Zhang Zhako. Things are a little more uncertain in the qualifying stage. You really do need to go hard to make sure you make the semis. But Wilkie just coasting in in 4.11, ahead of Kononova and Zhao uh, to go through. Arovic, Ferron and Abe missing out. So China and Ukraine already have guaranteed athletes in the final of the uh, women's sprint. Will they be uh, joined by uh, Leah Shenko and, uh, and or Guo, Li and Huang? We've got Vilda Nilsson and Sydney Peterson as well here. It'll be Peterson to go off first, the 20-year-old Sydney Peterson. Silver medalist in the uh, long distance. Nilsson and Peterson with the second and third fastest time through qualifying. 
Peterson some far uh, three seconds behind Nilsson's time. Nilsson, who did pick up the silver medal four years ago. Whoa, you G. Well, she's one of the young stars of this Chinese team. No question about that, Guo. She won the sprint race in biathlon. Li Huiling wearing bib 46, wearing 47, that's Huang Bangjuan. 22 years of age from Guazhou. And uh, we are underway then in semi-final two in the women's sprint event for the standing athletes here at Beijing 2022. So it's uh, Sydney Peterson, the weight first at zero, and the rest of the field in pursuit, starting 16 seconds down. And there is that familiar roar from the home crowd, pushing on Guo and Li and Huang. A little bit of a disadvantage for those at the back there. Five going at 16 seconds and not room across the line for them all to be in line. So Peterson making her way through and up this first incline around the 1.4 kilometer circuit. Lyushenko. And then it's uh, Guo. Yeah, Lyushenko, one of the big favorites coming into this event. We knew that there'd be a strong challenge as well from the Nilsson, the the world champion over the sprint distance from a home event in Lillehammer just eight weeks ago. So that uh, front three just racing together. Is somebody going to make a move? That's Vilda Nilsson, who's come past Sydney Peterson and uh, Lyashenko just hassling and harrying in the background as well. Peterson, who went off first, has dropped into second place here. And uh, Lyashenko certainly has her in her sights, but it's uh, Nilsson pushing on. You can see that lead over Peterson and Lyashenko for the Norwegian now. Yeah, Peterson just trying to tuck in, get some oxygen in the lungs and uh, try and keep a spot in the front three. They do have quite a gap back to the three Chinese competitors in Guo, Li and Huang. But uh, Guo, closest of them, and as long as she can feel that there's a chance she'll push it as hard as she can Guo as, as uh, Lyashenko moves up beside Peterson might take her on this climb should do but it's Nilsson who's cleared out now yeah it's whether the Chinese have a finish in them because there's a big gap now from the front three back to Guo Li and Huang maybe uh, Guo has something in the tank here uh, we know that she's a sprinter from her performance in the equivalent biathlon event earlier in these games, but it's going to have to make a move sooner or later. Vilda Nielsen, the 21-year-old, leads the field here in this second semi-final in the women's sprint. There's Peterson tucking in. Lyashenko just in a slipstream. Of course, it is about just doing the bare minimum here and finishing amongst the top three places. Don't necessarily worry about winning it, just qualify. Holding on very well is uh, Peterson. Third fastest qualifier. It looked like she might have been fading, but uh, she has uh, done a good job to keep uh, Lyashenko at bay. And then how far behind is Guo? Possibly too far. Yeah, really surprised about Guo Yuji in this race. Look at that gap. Well, one, two, and three. They're all on their own as they enter the stadium section. We have our qualifiers. The Chinese have nothing. Now, is Nilsson okay, or is she just holding something back here? Because Peterson has been able to move up almost beside her. And she's got some stamina, I must say, Sydney Peterson. And she's absolutely making sure of a top three spot by slotting in beside and behind Nilsson and has uh, got enough of the job done to just uh, really coast in now. And these three have it comfortably. There is no point spending any more energy than necessary. Nilsson from Peterson. And then Lyashenko. 
They are our one, two, three, and they will join Natalie Wilkie, Alexandra Kononova and Zhao Zixing in the final of the women's sprint for standing athletes here. So five nations will be in the start gate in the final of this event. Ukraine with two in Lyashenko and Kononova. And we hear the roar for our final three finishers, all from China. Guo Yuji at 17. There is not to be a repeat of the heroics that she produced in the biathlon sprint. And uh, Li Huiling and Huang Bangjuan over the line last here. It'll be a high quality final, it really will, in the women's standing sprints. Was Nelson Foxing? Was Peterson just making a little bit of a statement? Well, that'll be forgotten between now and then as the final looms just a little bit later. We've got the uh, vision impaired uh, semi finals to come very soon. Time doesn't matter, but she might have just want to know how it felt. Nilsson, Peterson, Lyashenko are the three to go into the final from semi final two, joining Natalie Wilkie, Alexandra Kononova, and Zhao Zixing, who went through from the first semi. So Ukraine with the two on the start line in the women's sprint final. All right, let's uh, turn our attention now to the vision impaired races, men's and women's semi-finals to come. Now, smaller fields here because of the presence of the guides. So just four in each semi. Moden, Kovaleski, Yu and Adikov. Sweden, Ukraine, China, USA in this first one. And Moden will go at zero. Kowalewski and you at 19 seconds and Adikov at 21. And so it's just the first two that go through in this case. Kowalewski with his guide Alexandra Mushkin and Yu Shuang of China. Just 18. Fourth in the biathlon sprint event. Now then Jake Adikov. A terrific the qualifying time with his guide Sam Wood. He was quickest in the 2 3 6 7 2. Ahead even of Brian McKeever. Also has a, a medal earlier in these games. Silver in the long distance. Adikov. Does he have the burst of pace required to do it? in the sprint. Coming up to the scheduled start of one o'clock, which is still uh, some 35 seconds away. Wouldn't expect them to let them go early. We'd love to run an event on time here. Three years ago, Moden won his semi. So Sebastian Modin off first there, the bronze medalist in the long distance race. He's put Sweden on the medals board here in the Paranordic events at Beijing 2022, guided by Emil Johnson Haag. We're looking for two qualifiers from our field of four here in these two semi-finals in the men's sprint VI category. 
Kovaleski and you go at 19 seconds and a couple of seconds behind them is Jake Adikoff of the United States. So it's Sweden, Ukraine, China and the USA and Moden first out of the stadium and up and around to his left. Go Moden and Jonsen Haag, his guide. We get a little bit crowded here and the athletes and guides have to be very careful not to cause a collision, be involved in one. Kovaleski just sitting in behind you and then it's Adikov catching them fairly quickly. Moden, powerful skier, strong thighs. He likes the shorter distances, can really go hard. There's the lead at present for the first skier to leave the start gate. Sebastian Modin of Sweden. We wait for Jake Adikov to make his move. And there aren't that many opportunities to make your move in this uh, sprint distance event. But here he comes round the back, just uh, breathing down the neck now of Yar Chuang and Anatoly Kovalevsky. And we've a tumble. That's a, a real shame. He's out at the uh, back of the pack. That's Anatoly Kovalevsky. It's a, a real tangle there. Yu Shuang has got back on his feet. And Jake Adikov has managed to avoid that traffic. But Yu has lost his guide, so that's uh, a significant uh, difficulty for the, uh, the Chinese skier because uh, uh, Wang Guan Yu, the guide for Yu, was caught up in that collision and we barely stop discussing the possibility of it happening and that that's really not what we want to see and unfortunately that's what has happened and it's had an influence over this race particularly for Kovaleski now Moden pretty much unaware of what's happened behind him he's only focusing on the job at hand and that's to get there as one of the front two looks like he might be able to do that again as he did four years ago just attaches himself to the to the pole of Jensen Haag. And so it's going to work out, it would seem okay for Adikov. But oh, really unfortunate for you and Kovaleski. Well, as you pointed out, there are not many opportunities to get past. And in one lap event, you almost have to take a risk to get that done. Yeah. Kovalevsky is nowhere. It is just the top two to go through. So we're looking at our qualifiers. Yu Shuang battling on gamely without uh, Wang Guan Yu, his guide behind. But uh, the top two here will be Jake Adikov and Sebastian Modin in his first semi final over the sprint distance for the uh, men's VI category. Adikov does it. And then thereafter, Sebastian Modin. And a great recovery, actually, by uh, Kovalevsky. But that collision oh, ruined his race. Yeah. Hearts go out to you and Kovalevsky over that uh, incident. It does happen. It's got to do your best to avoid it and recover as quickly as possible if it does. Fair competitor that he is, Kovaleski goes around and congratulates his rivals and who've gone through in Moden and uh, Adikov. All was fine at the start. Yeah, it was just after the right-hander, wasn't it, that we saw that collision clacking of skis as it all gets busy just to the right of your shot there oh it's the uh, guide isn't it of uh, Yu Shuang Wang Guan Yu who just yeah. collides with Anatoly Kovalevsky that is so unfortunate and such a shame at such a big moment really that that shouldn't have happened uh, I think that uh, when that's well it's, nobody meant it to happen but it was uh, if you could go back and have that moment over again, I think the guide would have kept a little bit further off to the left as we saw them coming up the hill. But anyway, nobody meant that to happen, and it's very sad that it did. But Adikoff and Moden go through.
Second semi-final to come. We'll have France, Ukraine, Canada and Poland in this one. Chalençon, Swako, the great Brian McKeever and Peter Gabowski of Poland. Good range of ages there from 25 through to 48. Chalençon to go first. 19 seconds back to Swako and McKeever and Gabowski as B3s will go at 21 seconds. McKeever, the magic man, trying to prolong his golden goodbye. Already has a first place, another gold medal from a long distance event. Gabowski as well with his guide. Jakub Tvadovsky goes 21 seconds behind Anthony Chalençon. He will be our first starter for France. Canada, France, Ukraine, Poland on the start line here. Akiva, Chalençon, Suyarko, Gabowski. Two from four who will join Jay Kadikov and Sebastian Modin in the final of the men's sprint VI. And away goes Anthony Chalençon with guide Bryce Ottonello in the second of the semi finals. Two to progress. Next it'll be Dmitry Swako of Ukraine. And he's away. Yeah. And just another two seconds delay for Makiva and Gabowski. And probably nothing more than a a racing incident would stop McKeever going through. Already starting his scythe through the field as it's Siarko in his sights. Siarko, two bronzes already from biathlon events, the sprint and the, the middle distance. Dmitry Siarko for Ukraine, contributing to this fabulous, voluminous medal hall for the nation of Ukraine. It's great to see you're watching the second semi-final in the men's sprint for vision impaired athletes here in the para cross country at Beijing 2022. And the field compacting, at least the back three. And four years ago, Siako just missed out in his semi-final, finishing behind Makiva and Jake Adikoff on that occasion in Pyeongchang. So looking for a top two finish here. 2-7 is Gabowski at uh, the rear of the field. And here is Chalençon trying to make good at the front for France. Here are the pursuers starting to gather him in. Guided by Brice Ottonello, Anthony Chalençon, the 31-year-old. And here come the chasing pack, ominously closing in. And Brian McKeever has... Move to the front of that chasing pack. Just got the edge on Dmitry Siarko there, who comes through with his guide, Alexander Ikonovic. And then further down, it's uh, Piotr Gabowski with Jakub Tvedovski. So it's whether Chalençon can hold here. There'll be a big challenge from Siarko and, of course, McKeever. Up the hill goes Chalençon with Ottonello. Plenty of enthusiasm. Technique holding up. It's only a short race, remember, 1.4 k's. Just make sure that uh, his man doesn't ski off the track. Allowed to keep in touch with the stock on the downhill sections. Yeah, this big, long downhill. A chance for speed before we see the stadium section and the run for home. And Chalençon with a wire-to-wire -wire performance here. He's done really well to hold. Well, he's the third fastest qualifier behind uh, Adikoff and McKeever, so perhaps we should expect him to see them off. It looks like Siako has detached himself from his guide in the background there. And uh, McKeever coming through fairly strongly on the left of your picture there into the shade shortly. Uh, that far behind is Siaka, but he looks to have uh, 
given up the moment. Yeah. Siako's thrown in the towel, hasn't he? It'll be Chalinson and McKeever joining Jake Adikov and Sebastian Modin in the final of the uh, sprint VI here. Chalinson, impressive, did well, hailed it. Would have heard those skis closing in. The skis belonging to McKeever behind. And he finishes just 1.5 down. In the end, McKeever after a fast finish, but uh, did enough here to get amongst the top two and qualify for yet another Winter Paralympic final. Uh, Siako just pulled up and then Gabowski finishes 26 and a half seconds behind Anthony Chalinson, our second semi final winner. Fresh territory, really, for Chalinson through to a final like this. Congratulations to him. He's got the one, two, three bib. And if he can finish one, two, or three, it'll be a medal. But only four in the final. So it's Chalonson and McKeever going through from that second semi-final. Siako missing out, unfortunately for him, uh, a second time. Uh, Peter Gabalski a fair way back. So there are your finalists for the vision impaired for the men. USA, Canada, France and Sweden. Would be more gold for McKeever. The answer a little later. So, quickly on to the women's VI over this sprint distance. Again, two semi-finals. Top two from both will move into the final. They all start at the same time. All four athletes in the B2 classification of the vision impaired. Edlinger of Austria, Volta and Rechtenwald of Germany and Sochenko of Ukraine. Edinger so fast in the, the qualifying rounds. Yeah, the only Maria Volta has had a fabulous game so far, a, a pair of medals, including a gold. Her compatriot Rechtenwald goes as well in this race. Natalia Kachenko as well of Ukraine. And by the way, there'll be Lynn Kazmaier as well going in the second semi for Germany as well. So Denis Nikulin, the guide for Natalia Kachenko, the 26-year-old. Start time of 1.14 in the afternoon, just 20 seconds away. Again, a big uh, thumbs up for the organisers here, keeping things exactly on track. Away they go then in the first of the semi-finals. Edlinger and Volta on the front row, followed by Rechtenwald and Sachenko. Uh, Edlinger, who looks so impressive in qualifying, two seconds to the good of Kazmaier as the fastest qualifier, Edlinger. Having had some bad luck in other events, looking for the big improvement and the much better result. Can she get through to the final? This is the first of the two semis. And Edlinger is in 1-3-1. Who's going to make a move? Edlinger just has the head of the pack here. She won a, a bronze in the 7.5K Classic in Pyeongchang, one of three events in which she competed uh, four years ago in the mountains up in Alpensia. And uh, is uh, entered for the biathlon events as well but uh, a couple of DNFs so far in the uh, sprint and in the, the long distance in the cross country. But she's really got it together today, Karina Edlinger. But it's a real bunched field here in this first semi-final in the sprint VI for women. But it's still Edlinger holding off at 138 behind her. That's Natalia Kachenko. 
and the two Germans have dropped to the back, Walter and Rechtenwald, but uh, they'll have a finish in them. Tachenko is the eighth fastest qualifier of the last into the semis, but is really making a good go of this, uh, slipping into second place as Edlinger leaves them behind. Tachenko is uh, going to make it hard for the two Germans. Uh, Dropping Rechtenwald significantly the off the back there is Rechtenwald. Yeah, so that only leaves Volta as a chance for Germany out of this one, and she's got a bit to do. And she has managed to get past uh, Tachenko. Made a nice little move there, has uh, Leonie Volta. And she's now clearly into second place. Tachenko struggling for some reason. Maybe spent a fair bit of petrol on that first significant incline. And so Tachenko back to third. And then it's Rechtenwald. And Volta in a solid and comfortable looking second spot. Still Edling her out in front. And uh, with a guy this time as well, Lorenz Josef <laughs> Lampel. But uh, Edlinger in control of this first semi, no question. At present, it's Leonie Maria Volta and her guy Permin Strecker going through in second place. Kachenko needs to find the extra speed here over the final few turns and then into the stadium circuit. But we're racing with Edlinger there, Bib 1-3-1 for Austria. It's a relevant point about Edlinger and Guide because they parted company in the, in the qualifying, but Lampel is sticking with her this time, albeit behind her, and he's keeping an eye over the shoulder to see where everyone else is. But uh, Lampel and Edlinger as a combination, and they are a team, aren't they, in these events, uh, doing a, the job here, and Edlinger... He just wants to be careful, Lampel, he doesn't create uh, an obstruction. And now he's moved back to the front of Edlinger, and they should be safely through, and Volta as well, unless someone behind them produces a withering finish. Looks unlikely. Edlinger has this one in the bag. Leone Maria Volta will go for another medal. She already has three. But it's uh, Edlinger who led from the front here and uh, a comfortable victory in the end or a, a comfortable qualifying berth secured in the final here of the sprint vi for women from karina uh, edlinger and uh, the continuingly impressive leonia maria valta of germany no joy i'm afraid for rechtenwald and uh, kachenko here yet yeah, all smiles Karina Edlinger, the winner of this first semi-final. Yeah, she's back in buoyant mood and with a taste for something here. Looks to be in good enough form. She'll have tough competition from whoever gets through in the second semi-final. Likely to be Shishkova and Kazmaier, but no certainties. Just cuts a different figure to the one who was so upset with her DNFs previously. So Edling it through in 408, a second ahead of Volta of Germany. Missing out Rechtenwald and Tachenko. Semi-final two in the Sprint VI, the women's Sprint VI here. Shishkova, Yang, Wang, Kazmaier, Ukraine, Germany and China in the start gate. So three of them are going to go off together. Shishkova, Yang and Wang. 13 Winter Paralympic medals for Oksana Shishkova, including two golds already here in Beijing. Then Yang Shanru, the 20-year-old, another Chinese racer, Wang Yue, also goes at zero here, and then starting two seconds back, the 15-year-old prodigy Lin Kazmaier. Two silver medals 
in the long distance cross country event and the, the sprint in the biathlon. So a fascinating race awaits us here. Can the Chinese get amongst Kazmaier and Shishkova? So just a few seconds away from the start. And away they go. Shishkova Yang and Wang. And two seconds later, Kazmaier. Top two to go through to the final. Women's sprint vision impaired. And it's Kazmaier at the back of the field, but can she haul them in? Guided by Florian Baumann. Kazmaier at the back. Yeah, Shishkova up at the front just with her guide, Andriy Marchenko. Another who uh, sort of gets into the rhythm, gets into the flow, and then uh, the guide has to play second fiddle at times, really, uh, when Shishkova really fancies it. That is the case here. She'll be uh, a massive favourite to fill one of those top two places. Of course she will. Kazmaier just taking a little bit of time to, to gather them in, but now on this climb she seems to be doing so, but there's a bit of a roadblock ahead of her, and the guide's going to do well to negotiate through here. Have to pick their moment to get around the field. No problems up the front for Shishkova. That's the way to avoid the traffic. Just lead. Yeah, breakaway of one. Oksana Shishkova up top there. The 30-year-old with this formidable winning run. Well, they've got past Young, have Kazmaier and Bauman. Shishkova doing it nicely out front. Looks to have a lock on one of the two spots. And Kazmaier is now closing in on uh, Wang. So Kazmaier opting for the inside track. And just a little bit of a drop of the shoulder there, but she keeps upright and keeps forging on and into second place now. So the two Chinese athletes at the back of the field. Kazmaier, who was the second fastest qualifier and some seven or eight seconds faster than the, uh, the Chinese competitors, uh, doing as expected, really. And uh, Yang Shanru really struggling at the back there with her guide, Yu Hongshun. But indeed, with Shishkova pushing on, this is going to be all about the race for the second place. And uh, it's a race that uh, Kazmaier has. Well, Kazmaier has found extra energy here. Up she and past <laughs> Shishkova. Wow. So there's been a change around in the one-two here. Well, we saw Kazmaier sit out a race somewhat unexpectedly earlier in the program. We thought, well, at, at 15, we've probably got to look after her but also perhaps saving herself for a big day of sprinting. Uh, to, to get through and win, you, you're racing three times on the sprint day, and uh, maybe they knew what she was capable of if they just kept her out of an earlier race. And, uh, so Kazmaier and Shishkova look to be heading to the final. Well, sometimes it does come down to basics, doesn't it? Kazmaier is half Shishkova's age, 15 and 30, respectively. She's had a, a fantastic Paralympic Winter Games as Lynn Kazmaier. A real star has been unearthed for Germany at uh, just 15. Well, there's a couple, isn't there? I think when we think of Volta, how, um, how they're free-spirited they are, the way they compete, and just the sheer joy of, uh, of racing. They're so evident on their faces and uh, also in their performances. Well, it's Wang chasing down Shishkova, who's in second place currently. Has Wang Yue got a finish? Uh, I think she's run out of road here. It's going to be Kazmaier, and it's going to be Shishkova who go through to the final of the women's vision impaired over the sprint distance. Well, Wang put a finish in, didn't she? But uh, perhaps it came too late. <laughs> The German uh, camp there giving them a good old cheer. They look a tight team. Yeah, and Yang Shanru 
over the line last 26 seconds back. So tremendous. Lynn Kazmaier goes for another medal. There'll be four in the final of the women's sprint VI. And two of them will be German. Smiling away down to the line. Strategically around the course, there was no rush about the work to haul them in from the rear of the field and just breezed past uh, Yushchenko there. Shishkova, big pardon. Kazmaier and Shishkova get through. Strong finish from Wang. Came a bit late. Young Chan Ru. Another day, perhaps. And confirming the qualifiers through to the final. And Edlinger, Kazmaier, Shishkova and Volta. Germany two in it. Going to get a medal. So, we're going to move on to finals very shortly. Sitting category, first of all, the final. So around 15 minutes away from a start of the six finals. So a bit of a pause for us all. But we do, do hope you don't go too far away. Zhang Zhikou about to have another flurry of action as the medals are decided. Sitting, standing and vision impaired, men and women. We'll be back shortly.
The Zhang Zhikou National Biathlon Center also hosting cross country and it is cross country that we're focusing on today. Do hope you've got a comfortable chair because this is going to be edge of the seat stuff as we bring you the six finals now. Uh, sitting, standing and vision impaired classes, men and women. A day of intriguing racing. Some great finishes and more to come. We've whittled it down to the six fastest in the sitting and standing categories and four each in the men's and women's finals for the vision impaired. There is the schedule for you. And, uh, well, it's been a great day. Slightly overcast and very mild. Not much of a breeze. But the racing's hot. And we should be expecting more of that in this first of our finals, the men's sprint for the sitting category. And, uh, of course, just under a kilometre and uh, there are our finalists lining up. Zheng and Mao of China, Liu and Wang, Colin Cameron of Canada and Taras Rudd of Ukraine. So China to win between somewhere, somewhere between one and three medals. Yeah, terrific Chinese representation again on uh, an action-packed day. Eight degrees above now. So pretty mild up on the hill. We've had 18 races thus far today. So now it all comes down to this, our six finals for the men and women in the uh, three sporting categories, starting with the men's sprint for sitting athletes. Of course, skiers have been out and around to make sure everything is fine. Uh, just finishing off to the left there, making their way down to the finish area. But it's a good looking track. Zhang Peng may be the favorite. They're going to go to allow for their classifications at the start. He, Zhang and Mao will go at zero. Colin Cameron at 16 and then three at 22 seconds. Yu, Wang and Rad. So Zhang Peng starting at zero then. The 29 year olds, part of the the gold medal haul for the host nation, already a winner in the long distance race. Mao Shangwu goes next, 35. He has a, a silver from that a long distance event. Great a Chinese presence again, which will delight the host fans up in the grandstand here. But uh, what about Colin Cameron? Lightning quick. In the qualifying round, he uh, eased up a bit in his semi-final. He knew what he had to do. 33, he'll be a big medal contender. Liu Zishu, the 24-year-old, uh, another gold medalist. That in the biathlon sprint. Wang Tao, an outlier, really, for the uh, Chinese. And then Taras Rad, a more accomplished a para biathlete, but he goes again here in a cross-country final. So they're still getting set. They've got to just under 45 seconds to think a little longer about what's happening. They're being set straight by the course officials here, but Cameron and Zhang were the winners of the two semi-finals. And Cameron and Rad appeared in the final four years ago and were just out of the medals. Cameron fourth, Rad fifth. Can they turn things around today? Rad to come from the back of the field if he's to do it. And Cameron giving up 16 seconds to Zheng and Mao at the start. Zheng and Mao are away at the start of this final for the men's sprint sitting category. And they'll be hoping to bring glory to the host nation. An anxious wait for Colin Cameron. He goes now and then the rest of the field. Six seconds after him. So Cameron can see the job ahead. Yep. And this staggered start, rather than the staggered finish, if you will, makes the action and the racing a little more raw, doesn't it? So they're starting at time intervals relating to their individual sporting classifications, but it means first over the line wins. And uh, 
We're not looking at factored times. So the clock runs the same for everyone. That is the situation here in the first of our six finals in the men's sprint event. And that is Cameron giving chase. He has power in those muscles, doesn't he? He's been absolutely brilliant so far today. And already on the podium as well, uh, Colin Cameron earlier in these games. He was a bronze medalist in the long distance event. Zheng and Mao keeping the order from the start. One and three. Cameron in bib number two. Off to the right of our screens there. Is he hauling them in? And then quite a gap back to Liu Wang and uh, Taras Rad of Ukraine. And, uh, Zheng and Mao racing together. Wouldn't they love a one-two finish in front of this grandstand at Zhang Jiko? Colin Cameron trying to have something to say about that. There's not a lot of time to do something about it either with a course of just under a kilometre. And they've still got him well in the distance. Zheng and Mao. Zheng just to the front. Here comes Cameron. He's got a lot to do and in a hurry. Round that corner pretty efficiently. And the Canadian sets out after them. Yeah, has Cameron got to finish in him? By the way, six medals in para cross country for the host nation China so far at Beijing 2022. And there have been an absolute haul of medals as well in the para biathlon. But it's a really strong finish being set up here by Cameron. Closing in on Zheng and Mao as they come down the home straight. Zheng it is in front of Mao. And Zheng has got a good clip going as well. I don't think he's going to be denied. Cameron is too far back, or is he? Zheng and Mao looking for a one-two. Cameron trying to close the gap. Cameron off to the left there, and the line is too close. Zheng is going to do it. Will Mao get second? I think he will, just. And Cameron has to settle for third. One-two China, Zheng and Mao. And coming in fourth is Liu. Then Wang and Taras Rad, the pace a bit hot for him in this final. Well, they finished as they started, Zheng, Mao and Cameron. It's another one-two for China, Zheng and Mao. Well, gold and silver in the long distance event. They've done it again here in the sprint. Cameron, his second bronze of the games. Well, we knew they were going to get at least one medal with four in the final. And they've picked up the top two. So they'll be absolutely over the moon about that result. Well, all four of the Chinese athletes celebrating. And uh, Cameron takes a moment to just absorb another success. More medals for the host nation. A third gold and a third silver in the cross-country events here at Zhang Jaco. Had it between them, Zhang and Mao. That was the start. Nothing between them, really, the whole way around. Racing as a, a two-man team, if you like. I'm sure Mao would have loved to have passed his teammate, but if he was going to lose to anybody, that would be Zheng. Remember, prior to these games, they had never won a medal in Nordic skiing. They've won plenty now. Zheng, Mao and Cameron. China, China, Canada. Now your medalists in the men's sprint sitting. Women's sprint event. Still a few minutes away.
So we're immediately going to have the recognition ceremony for the men's sprint. It does look like Jan is still feeling the effects of the effort or the emotion, perhaps. Anyway, getting some love from the team and now from the crowd. from now just looking back at the semi-finals he was four seconds behind Cameron in that second semi a little too strong for him in the final Zheng meanwhile a big winner in his semi over Yu and Rad and prevailing in the final that's the same podium as the long distance Cameron, another bronze. Mao Zhong Wu, another silver for the 35 year old, and another gold for. This man, Zhang Peng. Long distance, Paralympic Winter Games champion. And now he can add the sprint. So the men will make way for the women now. Rong Rong, our Paralympic Winter Games mascot. Red, uh, prominent colour throughout these games. Shui Rong Rong, a uh, figure resembling a Chinese red lantern. There's Rong Rong, and there's another one. Mascots you can purchase don't have the uh, the wreaths around them. That's reserved for the athletes. And we know from personal experience, don't we? Very prized possessions, very sought-after items they are too. And, uh, the mascots here for the games, more great memories for our medalists. One race, one recognition ceremony down, and five to come. It's just a, a really packed day of racing. Still a couple of minutes away from the women's final sitting sprint. China with three in it, the USA two, and the Canadian in Christina Picton. Hard to pick except to say it's Oksana Masters who will be looking for a second consecutive Paralympic Winter Games gold in this particular event. Having won it uh, by two seconds four years ago from Andre Eskow, Germany.
Second final then out on the racetrack here at Zhang Jacou on this mammoth day of medal races at Beijing 2022. It's the women's sitting category and this is the sprint final. So we've got the medalists from the, the long distance event here. We've got Yang, we've got Lee, Gretsch, Masters, Wang and Picton of Canada. So Yang Hongshong, she won the long distance event ahead of Oksana Masters. Lee Pan Pan was bronze in that event. Goes again here. Yang will set off first. Lee two seconds behind. Then it's Kendall Gretsch. Bronze in the biathlon sprint, gold in the middle distance, looking for another Winter Paralympic medal. Likewise, Oksana Masters, the gold and two silvers already here in Beijing. Ten Winter Paralympic Games medals all in. Wang Shiyu goes 26 seconds behind Yang, the 20-year-old. And we'll also see the... Canadian in the field as well in Christina Picton who's done really well to reach the final two biathlon events completed so far seventh in the sprint the 28 year old from Canmore in Alberta we're pretty much good to go here second final of the day and it's the women's sprint 10 seconds from the start Yang will lead them away from Lee and Gritch and the back three Away in the women's sprint final, Yang Hongqiang, who won her semi-final. Masters at the back of the field won the second semi. Yang and Lee lead it out for China. And there's this agonising wait for Kendall Gretsch. 19 seconds behind Yang, and then at 26 seconds go Masters, Wang and Picton. They wanted to go a bit early there. Just have to hold themselves on the line, and away they go at the back. Masters, can she haul them in again? So the pursuit is on. Gold and bronze in the long distance event. And, uh, Masters and Gretsch uh, compete in the biathlon as well, don't they? So really experienced, know what it takes to get to the front of the field in Winter Paralympic Games finals. And of course, uh, not long on from their summer Paralympic Games exploits last year. Gold medals were forthcoming in that event as well. Picton's moved ahead of Wang at the back of the field. It's about the chase, really, though, that's on for Masters. She's uh, moved past Gretsch and now just has the two from China, Young and Lee, in front of her. And it will be their job to try and hold her off. Well... In the men's final, which was the first to get underway on the snow here, it was China 1 and 2 in that race. Another significant medal haul beckons for the host nation here in what has been a, a groundbreaking event for the Chinese para Nordic sporting scene. And can they do it? Can they hold on? Well, it's Masters starting to make inroads on Young and Lee. So Lee in second place at present behind Yang. Just watch out indeed for the 32-year-old Oksana Masters. She's got 13 on the bib. She's a, a heck of a finisher. 
And those three medals already at these games will stand her in good stead. They're pushing up their heel. She's got to make a good tight turn here, no mistakes. Up slightly onto one ski and almost stopped in the tracks there. There's a long downhill section where it's hard to make up any ground on Young and Lee. So Masters, the job ahead of her. Well, coming out of that downhill section, still in the lead here. Yang Hongxiong. Oh, here comes Masters taking on Lee. I think she's got round the outside. Does Yang have the staying power up to the line? Start of the finish straight. Here come the, the lift in the decibel levels. It's Oksana Masters powering on. Has she got the finish? It's Masters. Closing down on Yang here, but Yang has the lead. Is it going to be a double gold medal winning performance? Masters is flying home. Yang looking for everything she's got. The line is too close. Yang is going to do it for China, and Masters must settle for second. It's another gold for Yang. It's a third silver of these games for Oksana Masters. And it looks like Lee is just going to get there in third. Yes, she is. Ahead of Wang, ultimately. And uh, down the order, Kendall Gretsch didn't have a finish in it. It's two more medals for China. It's Yang and Lee with Masters in the middle. It's a replication of the podium from the long distance event, as happened in the men's. So Masters goes over and congratulates the race of Picton and Gretsch. Meanwhile, for China, it's a one and three. Young and Lee. No, it wasn't. Not one done misclassified. She just lost a tiny bit on that hairpin bend, did Masters. I don't know if it would have made the difference, the margin 1.7 seconds, but just lost a little bit of pace at that crucial moment. In the end, Young too good and the line too close. Certainly was tiring towards the end, made a couple of not technically sound pushes, Young. She was exhausted by the finish. At, uh, had, did a nice job around that bend. That's the one I'm talking about with Masters. Maybe not taking it as quickly as she would have liked. So we'll have the the recognition ceremony for the women's sprint in just a moment. Excuse me. Yes. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. More medals for China. <laughs> Masters. Well. Assume she'll be back in a moment, Masters. Confirming the result for you, Yang of China, Masters of the United States and Li of China. Masters uh, unhappy about something there going past. There was actually an extra Chinese competitor there, Wang just uh, celebrating with her teammates. Masters just pushing through, and we'll hope to have her back in a second. Just wanting a tracksuit or something.
Yeah, so Yang and Lee, uh, they're ready to go, but still no sign of Oksana Masters. So perhaps Masters not uh, feeling too good after giving absolutely everything in that, uh, <laughs> that sprint final. She may be unwell. Hopefully be back in a moment for the scheduled recognition ceremony. Until we hear otherwise, we can't really tell you what this delay might be about. Was that uh, not too much push got out of that right pole that time? As uh, just missed the mark, but uh, it didn't matter in the end for Young. Masters and back into position. Needed to first of all get a mask, which uh, she's done. Recognition ceremony for the women's sprint. Young Masters and Lee. So the bronze medal goes to Lee Pan Pan. Couldn't hold off Masters in the straight, but did hold off the others. Wang, Gretsch and Picton. Another silver, her third of the Games, Oksana Masters. 11th Winter Paralympic Games medal overall. The champion, as she was in the long distance event, Yang Hong Chong of China. Well, that's a pair of golds already for the host nation. On this mammoth day of finals, it takes their medal haul to 10 and four golds in the cross country alone. wants to uh, wrap it up now and then invited to do so as she Gun and Lee exit the area as uh, more races to come they want to hold up the schedule Thank you, 
So as the mascots are collected and displayed, we're not far away from our next final, the third of six in this busy afternoon. And here is the field, the men's sprint standing freestyle. And the athletes from France, Kazakhstan, China, Ukraine, Germany and Norway. It's going to be a good one. Benjamin Davier of France, Alexander Gerlitz of Kazakhstan, Tsai Che Yun of China, Grigory Voshinsky, Marco Meyer, Kjartan Haugen of Ukraine, Germany, and Norway. And it will be Davier who leads them away three seconds ahead of Gerlitz, and then going on five seconds the rest of the field. Gerlitz, bronze medal in the mid-distance race that was in the biathlon earlier in these games so he'll go three seconds back on uh, Davier who will be the first starter and uh, we are underway here with Benjamin Davier the 32 year old it's going to be a fast frantic start you're watching the final of the men's sprint for the standing Athletes in the freestyle technique. It is Davier, a, a five-time world champion. He got two biathlon gold medals in Pyeongchang, six the winter Paralympic medals all in, and three golds. Leads the field away here over this sprint distance. So six athletes in the race, six nations represented. Maya pushing on there ahead of Grigori. Vovshinsky and at the back, Kjartan Haugen at 47. Great to see him in another Winter Paralympic final. He's been going since 1998 in Nagano, has uh, Haugen. But uh, that's Davier, the 32-year-old for France, leading the field. Yeah. 32, Gerlitz. May not be doing it for long. Gerlitz's teammate or co fellow countryman, Alexander Kolyadin, won this event four years ago. And uh, Vovshinsky finished sixth. But uh, Davier is the one who has to be caught. It is Vovshinsky. And Davier has Tsai not too far behind him. And the rest in pursuit of Tsai. Davier, can he hold on? Goodness, there's a great uh, pace being set by Tsai Jiayun. He'll be inspired by what's happened in earlier races. And uh, Germany's Meyer also looks to have a good pace going. Maybe a bit too hot for Hagen at the back. Volchinski positioning himself as well. A gold medalist in the biathlon sprint and silver in the middle distance also in biathlon. And Davier still at the front of the field. The 32-year-old Benjamin Davier from Le Grand Bonnon in France. Underwhelming performances so far in the biathlon events here at Jean Jacques. He was at six in the middle distance, just off the podium in the biathlon sprint. He finished fourth there, and he Maya. has to hold off the chasing pack. Yeah, Maya and Volshinsky have gone past Chai Yayun, and now they can set out after Davier. So it's really looking like Volshinsky and Maya are going to have a say in this. How far ahead is Davier still? He's uh, in the, well into this descent, and the straight is not too far away. But uh, nor uh, Volshinsky and Maya. Meyer in second place at the moment. Is the gap too big? Is Davier tiring? Just now, up the mound and into the finishing straight now. It's all about Davier. Has a, a little look over his right shoulder. Looks to have got it, actually, Davier. Every straining sinew now. It really hurts. But it's Davier up to the line first. And it's Maya who's going to come in for another silver medal. Vovchinsky gets the bronze. Davier led from the front a super race. And he did have the sprint. He had the energy and the stamina for another Winter Paralympic Games gold medal. His fourth. Davier, formidable for France. Yes, 1.3 seconds. 
Meyer. Uh, he looked a little disappointed as he came across the line, not quite doing it. Well, tears in the family and the support team for Davier. Uh, Marco Meyer. And Davier congratulates Wawczynski, who's uh, finished a little better than four years ago. Well, there was actually a tie for third. Davier does it. 307.5. Nice race. Nice race. Yeah, well done. Good spirit from uh, Maya towards Davier. Well, if he was briefly disappointed, he's happy now, is uh, Marco Maya. It's a wonderful achievement, a second place in a Paralympic final that has to dip the lid, as it were, to Benjamin yeah! Davier <laughs> today. Oh, he held on, barely. What a finish. It should be close, over just uh, 1.4 kilometres, and it was. <laughs> France, Germany, Ukraine are one, two and three in the uh, sprint event here. First individual a title at the Winter Paralympic Games for Benjamin Davier. And he did it wire to wire here, holding off for Marco Meyer. Another silver after he finished second in the biathlon sprint event. And uh, Vovchinsky completes the set. Already a gold and a silver from earlier in these games. He now has the bronze, Grigory Vovchinsky. Just that half second. Separating second and third. to be sharing a water bottle but I think in the, the heat of battle and the, how well they know each other they're happy to do so and Davier nice. great to see the smiles as we keep saying fierce competitors on the track good friends off it oh there I go <laughs> had my back turned to what was going on here is uh, all, all good Impressed how quickly Marco Meyer turned his mood around. There was that just one second of disappointed, disappointment as he came across the line in second position. And then, all right, that's OK. Davier, too good. I'm happy with second. And I'll do my best. Boschinski, oh, what a career. More medals for the collection of Grigory Boschinski. A third of these games a sixth all-in in terms of the Winter Paralympic Games. Marco Meyer, another silver after his biathlon sprint second place. Turning into a very productive games for the German Paranordic squad. But on the board, the first medal for the French. Davier. Uh, Winter Paralympic Games champion in the men's sprint standing. There's no sign of uh, Sai Jiayun in the top three, having won his semi-final, finishing fourth in this one. 
So enough about the great spirit shown by these three men towards each other. Respect for the race, competition for Paralympic Winter Games sport. Meyer was third in his semi, but you didn't read too much into that. He was coasting down, knowing he was safely into the final. And second in that final, behind Davier and ahead of Wawczynski. Our next final, just uh, two or three minutes away. It'll be the women's sprint standing. Athletes from the USA, China, Canada, Norway and Ukraine. And following that, the two vision impaired finals. It's the women's sprint standing, free technique, and the final draws together. Athletes from Europe, Asia, and North America. And two from Ukraine there, Kononova and Lyushenko will go away last with Vilda Nielsen of Norway. And Natalie Wilkie of Canada. Is she the favourite? Maybe, but Nielsen will have something to say about it. So too Zhao Xiqing will go at three seconds and Sydney Peterson of the United States first in the middle of the field there. Here she is. Having a very good games. Was second in her semi-final behind Nilsson. Zhao was third in her semi behind Wilkie and Kononova. China doing so very well on this hectic day of cross-country competition. Wilkie Standing on the second line there behind uh, Peterson. And Wilda Nielsen, who won that second semi final ahead of Peterson and Lyashenko. Just not sure that uh, Lyushenko or Kononova going away at the same time as Nilsson and Wilkie have got the pace to feature in the top three 
happy to be proved wrong. And that's the glorious unpredictability of sport that draws us back again and again. 20 seconds away from a start. Three finals down. Three to go. Peterson to go first. The uh, 20 year old sets off. Silver medalist in the long distance event. She's had a real breakthrough, a performance here at these Paralympic Winter Games. Sony started competing internationally at the recent World Champs in Lillehammer, where the rest set off. It was Zhao Jiqing. Out second, the 24-year-old uh, from China. But watch out for Natalie Wilkie, the 37 on the bib, the 21-year-old Canadian, already a gold medalist. And Vilda Nilsson as well from Norway, who is the world champion in this sprint event. Zhao has gone out very quickly and very hard to the cheers of the crowd here at Zhang Zhako and has overtaken Peterson in no time at all. But Peterson has got great staying power even over these shorter events, not to be discounted. And Vilda Nilsson has left Wilkie well behind. And uh, this is a very good start for uh, Nilsson. We'll see if the Norwegian can carry it through. But it really did look like Zhao had great purpose about her start as she disappears up the hill. Yeah, Zhao not messing around at the front of the field, hitting the lead early, and now it's all about pacing it and bringing it home. She won a, a bronze medal in the biathlon sprint event. So marksmanship not required here. It's all about raw pace and power over this sprint distance. 37, that's uh, Natalie Wilkie looking to contribute to what's been a, an excellent games for the Canadians so far. She has a gold from the long distance cross country event, but uh, has work to do. That's Peterson coming round the bend, dropped off the start early and now down into third place. It's Vilda Nielsen who's mo moved up into second and really hot on the heels now of Zhao Zixing, a world champion from Norway, coming round the outside and looking to get the front ahead of Zhao Zixing. It's uh, Vilda Nielsen who moves into the lead, our world champion. And Peterson in third position and here comes Wilkie of Canada. So... Wilkie just steps off to the left to make the passing move on the American. And uh, it would be Nielsen looking to make amends for the second place she had four years ago in Pyeongchang. And it was uh, Natalie Wilkie third that day. So things are about to be turned on their head for the results here. As Nielsen really starts to gap the field. She's hauled in Zhao, who went out a bit too hard too early, it would seem. And... Uh, Others are starting to pass the Chinese competitor. It's all about uh, Nielsen at the front. And Wilkie has moved into second. Peterson also moves past Zhao. Now Zhao went out so strongly. I can absolutely whip it out of the blocks here. It doesn't look like she's been able to maintain the pace. So it is Vilda Nielsen looking for the World Championship and Paralympic Winter Games double in the space of, what, eight and a half weeks, those recent world champs in Lillehammer, where she brought delight to uh, home faithful. Peterson, by the way, was second in that event. Lyachenko, the bronze medalist, absolutely nowhere here. It is still Nielsen, but uh, Wilkie has made a surge. Not long to go now, but look at Wilkie closing in on Vilda Nielsen, now taking the outside line. Peterson still holding on to third place, but it's Wilkie who's come round Nielsen. It's going to be a straight shootout down the home straight. I think Nielsen just about still has it. Who has the sprint finish? Is it Nielsen or is it Wilkie? They're running out of road. And Peterson in third place. What a finish coming up here. Wilkie has just got it covered at the moment. And Wilkie coming down to the line. Nothing that Nielsen can do at this late stage. And she's going to have to settle for second. Wilkie Double gets gold it. for Wilkie, the long-distance champion. And she adds the sprint event. Superb for Canada. What a finish from Natalie Wilkie. Nielsen just didn't have it in the end. But Peterson, another Winter Paralympic podium.
Well, so true is it that you only have to be in front once, and the timing of the run from Natalie Wilkie, exquisite. Just a perfect race. And a perfect result for Natalie Wilkie. A 21-year-old. Oh, it's a day for the youth, isn't it? Wilkie and Nielsen at 21, Peterson at 20. With the stamina, with the speed. And we didn't really spot Kononova and Leoshenko. Pace a bit hot for them. Nielsen absolutely ruined at the end. She gave it everything. She just couldn't hold off Natalie Wilkie when it came down to it. There they are on the big screen seeing themselves. That's always a bit of a, a shock and then a pleasure. <laughs> they, they hauled in Zhao. That was the first assignment. She just went out too hard, I, I guess. Zhao, she think that would be the suggestion after they just breezed past her and it looked to be Nilsson's to lose. But uh, Wilkie was going to have something to say about it and left it to the straight to do it. Here are the strides that mattered. Nilsson digging deep. Wilkie a bit deeper and a bit harder and a bit faster. And it still seemed that she had plenty in the tank as she crossed the line. Wilkie, well, she won a gold in Pyeongchang four years ago. That was in the 7.5K. And uh, she has double gold now four years on in Beijing. post-mortem there for the medalists. It's Natalie Wilkie of Canada, Vilda Nilsson of Norway and Sydney Peterson of the United States. One, two, three, the women's standing free technique final. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> Brilliant racing that, agreed. The plot twists in that race, be it ever so short, quite complex. I love these stories with no plot. It just, it just happens in front of you and just follow what happens. And they're all so close off the racetrack as well, aren't they? Great camaraderie at the end. And uh, we'll see a recognition ceremony at the end of that uh, women's standing sprint final in a pretty short order here. The medals awarded later. A chance for the athletes to stand in front of the crowd and enjoy the moment and just let the success sink in. I think what we overheard was uh, Nilsson saying to Wilkie, oh, it was just too much, it was uh, just too much for me. And uh, what? What? Okay. Okay. I'll leave the skis behind apparently, That's getting that sorted. Fall and a bit precious. to gold in four years in this race. And Wilson, the second silver.
remarkable story, Wilkie, really. The, the accident that she had at school that resulted in an injury to her, to her hand. Uh, two years later, she turns up at uh, Pyeongchang at, at 17 and now at 21. A very mature winner. On the podium again, uh, Sydney Peterson. That's a great smile. Just uh, lights up the surroundings here. Just couldn't bring the world champs form. Yeah. Another gold medal, but silver. Still terrific for Vilda Nilsson. And then our winner. Of the women's sprint race for standing athletes. It's Canada and Natalie Wilkie jumping for joy. Oh, Canada again, her second gold of the Games. Indeed, that upgrade from third in Korea Republic four years ago. They can make their way off and uh, answer some questions, get some photos taken and enjoy the moment. Two more finals to come. say Wilkie makes it look easy but it looks like it's no big emotional deal she's just happy another nation added to the middle stable with Norway On we go. And now into the vision impaired category. The men's final over the sprint distance is next on the program. It's been a, a rip snorting day. We're going to see Chalinson, Moda, Adikov, and McKeever. And the Canadian superstar Brian McKeever looks for his fourth consecutive. The Winter Paralympic title in this event, the uh, men's VI sprint. Sebastian Modin of uh, Sweden already has a medal. He won the bronze medal in the uh, long distance event. Couldn't quite get up to McKeever. Chalinson was uh, a quick qualifier with, with uh, his guy, Brees Ottonello, Jake Adikov as well. Lightning quick in the earlier rounds. Uh, the qualifying in the semi-final, silver medalist in the uh, long-distance event behind this guy, Brian McKeever, wants his golden goodbye, guided by Russell Kennedy. And it is so far so good for the man who has 18th Winter Paralympic medals so far in his career. About 30 seconds away from a start, and it will be Chalonson and Modin who have a 21-second advantage as they leave the gate. Adikoff and McKeever will go together at 21 seconds. So four in the final. Chalonson and Modin. In the B1 classification, B3, Adikoff and McKeever. Chalonson in one, two, three. And Modin in one, two, four. Away they go. And 21 seconds, will it be enough to hold off the likes of Makiva and Adikov? Well, in Makiva's case, probably not. We'll see. It's only 1.4 Ks, and Moden has power. Shalonson had a classy semi-final, but Makiva, such a prodigious winner. 
Can Adekov keep pace with him? And how long until they haul in either Shalonson or Modin? Can they do it at all? It's quite a distance from here, but uh, they're fast at the back. Adekov and Makiva, who pre-race looked like he didn't have a care in the world. It's just business as usual. Let me at it. Well, he just knows what it takes. Been competing for the last two decades at the Paralympic Winter Games. The first gold medal arrived in Salt Lake City all of 20 years ago. And just a, a crazy run of success at World Champs and the Paralympic Winter Games. He does specialise in the uh, cross country. He's been a, a world champion in uh, biathlon in years gone by, but it is the uh, cross country ski that brings the best out of there. A man born in uh, Calgary, lives in uh, Canmore these days. It's Chalonson leading Modin, and then that distance back to the chasers, Adikov and Makiva. Adikov leading Makiva up the first hill, and uh, that's Makiva just biding his time for the challenge. They are starting to catch them. Adikov and Makiva a race in two as they haul in Chalonson and Modin. Modin in second place and they're very quickly gathering them in. Adikov, Makiva at the back of the field. He never stays there for too long. They're just being careful about the passing manoeuvres and uh, stepping to one side. Modin allowing them through. He can't hold them off. And he's making sure there's no collision. Challenge on yet to be caught. Well, looking at this race cold, you would think it would be Adikov, Modin, and of course McKeever holding off Challenge on. And here comes the move. McKeever moving through in this VI final the men's sprint event. And all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, Chalonson drops to the back of the field. McKeeva has to make a burst at some point. Up ahead of him is Adikov. Adikov is uh, not worried about the reputation of McKeeva. He really wants to try and stretch the famous Canadian. And McKeeva, has he got something left for this run to the line? Will it be McKeeva again? He nearly lost uh, his balance there. McKeeva steps out. Beside Adikov and passes him. Oh, he's got plenty in reserve. The years and years of training and success come down to this again. The home straight. McKeever's going to do it once more. Is he tired? Well, he says he is, but he doesn't look like it. McKeever waltzing away with it for yet another Paralympic Winter Games medal. It's number 15. Absolutely outstanding. Goodness me, like a walk in the park. McKeever, at 42 years young, has done it again, and he wins this sprint event for the fourth successive Winter Paralympic Games. Adikov tried so hard to make it a different story, wasn't able to do so, and Modin comes in third, and Chalonson just out of the medals, uh, but joy for the Swede to pick up that third place. Hello, seen this before, McKeever. <laughs> The winner, Russell Kennedy, his guide. What a patient race they skied. Just sit back and admire the race management. And picking that time again to make the move. And as you said, coming over the line with so much in the tank still. McKeever, just magnificent again. Well, said it's going to be his last games. Will it be? We'll have to wait and see. Does he fancy another a tilt at Milano Cortina in four years' time? I'll have to see. I don't think he fancies the training. He says he's not fussed about the medals. We know that as uh, Modin tries to gather himself and get up off the deck. Chalonson likewise in the background there. You can spend a lot of energy in a couple of minutes in this caper. Three minutes, 19 for McKeever's winning time. I really admire the effort of Adikov. He, he just knew he had to go full tilt at it if he was to have any chance of the upset. Keep it too good. There was the move on Chalonson. He did well to hold them off as long as he did, but Adikov and McKeever just swept past. And then it was a race in two until the last uh, 20 metres and it was a race in one. 
won by the wonderful McKeever. Adikoff. Oh, he just tried so hard. <laughs> you see the race plan. I'm not going to die wondering. I'm going to take it to this man. McKeever's had all the answers for so long. And a little acknowledgement there to his guide in Russell Kennedy. Chalonson is up. Receives the congratulations from McKeever. Well done. Well, ever the gentleman, Arne McKeever, he doesn't just exit the sport if that's his choice with medals, but a great reputation. Confirmation then of a repeat podium. It's the same as in the 20k, McKeever with the gold, Adikov with the silver, and Sweden's Sebastian Modin with the bronze medal. Chalençon finishes fourth. the athletes for our next recognition ceremony this the men's vision impaired sprint we've just observed I don't think McKeever you, you would never say he was bored with winning he just does he's got nothing left to prove though has he yeah completely right pressure's off He's invincible. He's had his successes down the years at the World Champs as well. We know that. And of course, the Canadians were mothballed, really, for the recent World Champs. They decided not to send a squad to Lillehammer, kept them fresh, kept them safe, kept them away from COVID. And it's all panned out, ideally. Quick succession, Canadian golds, Natalie Wilkie. And then Brian McKeever here, celebrating. Another first place at the Paralympic Winter Games. Sebastian Modin takes another bronze for Sweden. Yes, Martin Silver in Pyeongchang in the sprint. Been winning medals at the Winter Paralympic Games since 2010, as Sebastian Modin. Eighth Paralympic Winter Games medal all in for the Swedes. He's unlucky to find himself in the same era as McKeever. But he can keep going, Martin. I guess the same can be said for Adikoff. But if these guys uh, persist when McKeever hangs up the skis, then it'll be a new game. Uh, you just nailed it, really. Uh, misfortune to be around in the same era as another's. Silver for Adikov, second of these games. He had a second as well in Pyeongchang. But uh, nobody can get near the magic man. The golden goodbye is panning out for Brian McKeever. Yet again, wins a Winter Paralympic race for the 15th time and for the fourth time in a row in the sprint. Well, as we've told 
the story. 2010, he was all but selected into the Olympic team for Canada, Vancouver. And left out at the last minute. It was a crushing blow for him at the time. But his Paralympic record well, can't be matched in this sport, in this category. Just one race to come on this hectic but highly enjoyable day at Jung Jaco. Pretty, uh, pretty chuffed to find himself centre of attention in the Super Bowl with the uh, that he made with his brother Robin. There's an audience of billions understanding and appreciating what these athletes are about. So back on the start line then, uh, four athletes competing in the women's VI final over the sprint distance. Austria, Ukraine, and two Germans in the mix here. Karina Edlinger, Oksana Shishkova, Leonia Maria Walter, and Lynn Kazmaier. With uh, their respective guides, Lorenz Joseph Lampel, Andrei Machenko, Permit Strecker, and uh, Florian Baumann. Edlinger has been quick as lightning in the earlier rounds, uh, qualifying in the semi-final. It's the day when it's all come together for her. Uh, Shishkova, the Ukrainian, looks for more medals. She has three already, including two golds. She won the long-distance event. Leonia Maria Valta at just 18 has had a fantastic games as well. Gold and two bronzes for her. And then uh, Lynn Kazmaier, too, at just 15, has a pair of silvers. She was second in the long distance event and uh, second in the biathlon sprint, too. We're still some uh, 40 seconds away from the start. It will be Kazmaier who goes away last. She concedes two seconds to Edlinger, Shishkova, and Volta. She being a B3 category vision impaired athlete. Edling at Shishkova and Walter B2. Clock ticking down on your right there. Just uh, 10 seconds to go. Last race of the day. Let's hope for a good one and no incidents and a great finish. Yeah, the final athletes to bring fire to the ice on this jam-packed day of action at the Zhang Zhaku National Biathlon Centre. This is the women's sprint vision impaired final. Four athletes in the mix here, so one will leave heartbroken, one will leave without a medal. We have Edlinger, we have Walter, we have Kazmaier and Shishkova in the mix. Shishkova would have been the big favourite for Paralympic Winter Games appearance, two bronze medals in the uh, sprint at Sochi and uh, Pyeongchang, 30 years of age now. Can she upgrade here? Shishkova leads them up the hill the first time and only time at this particular hill. Edlinger <laughs> settles into second place. And then Volta and Kazmaier with a bit to do from the back. And in fact, it's uh, Volta who's already dropped to the tail of the field and Kazmaier has passed her. So Volta finding the early pace a bit quick, but uh, might recover. You see Shishkova takes them out and uh, Edlinger is right there and be very careful there's no mistakes in overtaking if she can make the move and there is uh, Kazmaier trying to close the gap it's Shishkova Edlinger shuffling out to the side Edlinger leaving the guide behind and we've not for the first time 
Yeah, we see that quite a bit with uh, our vision impaired athletes into the groove, and then it's, uh, I'll take it on, thank you very much. So, a, uh, a real dig up the hill, just a chance to gain some traction and hit the front of the field for Karina Edlinger, 133 behind. That's Oksana Shishkova, and it's still the two Germans at the back there. Kazmaier and bringing up the rear, struggling a bit, I think. Yes. The only Maria Valter. I think that climb seemed to test her. I was just thinking prior to the race that it's one thing at uh, the age of 18 to race on consecutive days, but three times in a day, you know, do you have the experience and the recovery to make a, a strong showing in the final. Well, uh, Karina Edlinger is certainly doing that. Up to 23. A bit more experience. Shishkova. Settles in, grabs the stock of Mashenko, the guide. Just to let go for the climb. Edlinger needs to be caught. Starting to put a bit of a gap between herself and Shishkova and then Kazmaier. And not long to go now. Edlinger still holding the lead here. That gives you an idea of the uh, the distance that Shishkova has to make up. An opportunity to pick up speed, letting the hill do the work for you, and then it'll be down the, the second dip there and into the, the stadium part of the course. The end is in sight, and it's looking good for Edlinger. The uh, little look round to check the gap back to Shishkova. It's Edlinger, uh, Austria, to get a gold medalist here in the Women's Sprint VI event. It's Edlinger being cheered home with her guide, Lawrence Jotef Lamport. He's happy to sit in behind and keep an eye on what's going on behind because Edlinger has got it done here. She can't be caught. They've got an interesting technique between them, and it's a winning one as Edlinger comes down to the line to claim the gold and punch the air in triumph, the Austrian. And Shushkova coming through in second. And it'll be Kazmaier for Germany to get the bronze. Well, Edlinger, it's really been a roller coaster ride at these games with uh, true disappointment in other races, the biathlon, and yet uh, her recovery for this final and right through the day has been something to behold and enjoy. Four-time world champion. Now she is a winter Paralympic champion, Karina Edlinger. Well, another medal for Germany. Shishkova just had a little too much to do. But she has another medal, her fourth of these games, the second silver, but it's a first gold here in Beijing 2022 for Karina Edlinger. And that concludes the racing for the day. My goodness, haven't we seen some, some competition? Some marvellous racing. <laughs> Edlinger. Races off. Shishkova looked good early. And then Edlinger waves goodbye, not just to Shishkova, but her guide for the moment. He, it's a curious uh, strategy they have. Sometimes he's in front, sometimes trailing. But uh, Lawrence Lample seems to know what's best. between them they've got it all worked out more than a bit happy confirmation then it is Karina Edlinger of Austria taking out the women's sprint vision impaired from Oksana Shishkova of Ukraine and then Lynn Kazmaier of Germany. We're off the
pace today, Leonie Walter. But she's had other moments in these games, and she's been a marvellous competitor and has done well to make the final. She's give her a little uh, race post-mortem with the guy there. So I did my best. Maybe it was over there, maybe it was up there, but in the end, Edling are too good. Just seem to be missing uh, Kazmaier at the moment to join the recognition party. There she is. in front of the crowd here on this very mild day at Zhang Zhikou. then as our athletes are saluted so uh, on the right of your picture there then Kazmaier and what about this a third medal at age just 15 she had a, a pair of silvers and now a bronze in the sprint in Kazmaier, adding to the German tally. Fabian Baumann, the guide as well. Arms held aloft. The bronze is Germany's in the women's VI sprint. Yet another medal for Shishkova. Andrei Marchenko, the guides, more than doing his bit as well. Of course, two golds and now a second silver. What well, has been a fabulously successful and productive games for Oksana Shishkova. But Austria on the podium, and not just that, on the top spot of the podium, thanks to Karina Edlinger, a couple of DNFs in biathlon. And look at the emotion as she celebrates the gold medal in the women's sprint. Well, wiping away the tears before the name was announced, she's just really riding what's happened here. Oh, can't believe it. It has happened. Keep it in sometimes. Why bother? Just let it all out. All the training, all the stress, all the travel, all the sacrifices. It can be worth it. Well, and after this mammoth day of racing, quick word with Nelson there. These competitors, of course, run into each other constantly at World Cup, uh, World Championship, and uh, Paralympic events. The program it takes a breather up at uh, Zhang Zhako for 24 hours. We'll return with the final para biathlon races. And uh, it's
in terms of the, the cross country, uh, middle distance events are to come and the relays to round off the programme here. And, uh, what a day. Five hours solid of racing. Paralympic sport doesn't come much better, if any better, than what we've seen today at Zhang Zhikou. Whittled down to six finals, uh, spoils shared amongst four nations. France and Austria had victories, so too China and Canada, a couple each. And the nature of the competition was just totally engaging, really enjoyable. Hope you found it that way as well. Yeah, nothing quite like sprint racing, is that? So the program takes a break after this terrific day of racing. Four more medals for the host nation, China, a couple of them gold. Makiva wins again too. And uh, a couple of extra medals into the mix for Ukraine. Thanks for your company. We'll see you again very soon here at uh, Zhang Zhaku. But uh, take a break before the... Uh, the resumption of the program in para biathlon and then a little later to come the middle distance races in cross country and the relays for now though it's bye bye And in Ukraine. <laughs>